Hello! I am Asser, and we're working on some uh, development stuff. And also, we've got Hex here, who is doing the arts. Look at that Hello. cute arts. That they are cute doodles. But, uh, yeah, we gotta come up with a new name for our system today, so we're gonna go ahead and do this. I don't know what you mean there, Merle. I, I think you might be smoking something. <laughs> <laughs> I am evil. No, you're not <laughs> evil. No, I have, definite, I, I have definitely started my evil arc. Asher, no, that's that's not evil, at all. But oh, but but I but I know. made everybody's pillows hot. Mm-hmm. That's just like mildly unpleasant at best. No, it is evil. No. Considering how many people like to use me as a pillow or as a mat, I would easily say that a heated pillow is not out of the equation. I am sorry. How well done, Brian! <laughs> hey, done, Brian. Alright, so, uh, we are gonna have some, uh, commissions, uh, and stuff that you guys can get from Hex. Uh, we're gonna have, uh, those open. Is Asher not sweet baby? Asher is sweet baby. I should probably have put the wheel on the other tab there, but oh well. What's up? <laughs> also, good, just gonna go door dashing. Okay. Also, dear God, uh, like, let me know if you need anything, okay? I does this care. count as uh, art wheel art? So yes, this does count as art wheel art. Uh, do keep in mind that uh, we're only with a. Uh, Hex here, we're only going to do the line stuff, no colors. I can do colors. I can do whatever you want. Oh, well then, <laughs> yes! Anything! <laughs> Alright, does this include the, uh, the fucking grounds redeem? Yes. Or not? Let me know if you would like to get on the, uh, Art Reptile wheel spin or cuddle thing. monster. I must know. Zorok oh. 720 has Ready requested the expertise of Professor Zivathoriston von Eucalyptus. But, 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 no. be Asser. Get out of here, Professor. <laughs> we don't want you here. <laughs> you hold no power here. <laughs> All right. It's time to do an entire session in Domino. I came in at an awkward time. Hello, no. Jace, my sweet baby. My sweet, sweet, sweet baby. I'm still mad at you, Kerr. Why are you mad at me? <laughs> because you got my friend that's into metal angry at me because I tried to pay or learn the high parts. Mm hmm. And I did not do it right according to him. So now you got him <laughs> on that bent, too. We <laughs> <laughs> uh, two people into that song now. Uh, Wait, real um, quick, um, Zoro, I'm gonna go ahead and refund uh, that card. I, I just want to be after for the moment. Sorry. Hmm. Hmm. I, I'm sorry. I'm... It's like he is. It's like he's dead to Twitch, Alan. Oh, I get ya. Yeah, I'm gonna actually swap us over to our chat screen because uh, too a little bit too much talking. So we'll put the game on pause right now. Uh. Robert, the wheel is for art that you can get from the wonderfully talented Hexlass. Wheel? Just let me know if you want to get on the wheel. Uh, prices are the same as with uh, Mirai. So, yeah. Uh, 33 for uh, lined and 77 for colors. I'm just glad, Jace, that you have seen the light of how grand Reviver is, because it is like the greatest song ever made. It is a very good song. 
I will die on this hill, and I will fight anyone on this. Oh. Have I finished a root, path, Papa Lynx? No, I have not finished any roots. Pet, pet, I've not pet. finished the game yet. I'm just glad to find a metal song that actually has a good pet, bass pet, riff. Pet. And I, also, I'm sorry, Jays. I am totally headcanoning that song basically being your theme song. It, it is it is basically the theme song in my head for that. I'm okay with that. All right, I'm going to turn on Ryan. Okay, uh, could... Could I get, uh, does anybody else want on the wheel before we spin and get Hex started? How much is it? Uh, 33 for color, for lined, 77 for color. Mm, let me take, let me take a look. I could probably do line, but I can't do color. Unfortunately, like the dice? Razim evil. <laughs> <laughs> These math rocks aren't very tasty. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nano, we're taking art commissions. We, we've got a text here ready to do some arts. 33 for lined. 77 for colors. Have I ever played 999? I have not. So, ah, the Nanao game. Rygon, did you want to get on the wheel? Right now, is there only one person on the wheel? Yes. Right now, it's just me. Because <laughs> I did a crown for team. Uh, do you, we have any examples anywhere so I can kind of see what they're good at? Uh... Well, if you look in the adult art share, there's one that got posted uh, Tuesday. Uh, otherwise, well, that you, you can't get that with, uh, you know, the, the stream, yeah. but... Uh, otherwise, uh, up in ZGF Art, uh, you can see a few examples. Uh, I reply to one. Okay, it's the... Um... It feels so strange one. Uh, what? Oh, down and on all an adult. Uh, mm, yeah. Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, I guess toss me on the wheel. Why not? Okay. Might as well give Taldarius some competition. <laughs> <laughs> And there you go, Zoro. <laughs> Asher is such a good boy. No, I am evil. Mmm, super good. I don't know, apparently he was taught how to pour cereal incorrectly. <laughs> Asher is a good bean. Uh, hello there, a typical <laughs> ice man. I'm listening to the song. I found a, a version, and it's great. Of the song? Uh huh. I found a slightly different version, and it's so good. Well, send it to me. I'll listen to it at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I wonder how the song would sound on acoustic. Probably terrible. I, actually, I have it in acoustic. That's what I was listening to. It's actually pretty good. No, now I demand that you share it with me because I actually do acoustic way more than I ever touch metal. And I must know. I will send it to you right now. <laughs> I'm still just vibing out to Riot Overkill. I love me some medium. But again, I love me some everything, so... Yeah, I, I shared a song called Reviver with uh, with him, and he has apparently it has taken root in his brain. I I've approve only, wholeheartedly. I've only added it to my playlist and listened to it every day. See, I'm glad. This song is amazing. 
And the lyrics are just, oh, I love the lyrics so much. It's like, okay. so good for you guys. Sorry. Uh, you guys have about three minutes, and then I do the spin. Let me know if you want on the wheel. Oh, I unscrew this. Oh. Hmm. Also, Hex is cute. Hello there, Jevy Bond. Welcome in. Let's see what that TV is. Okay, about two minutes. Then I do spin. Who wants on wheel? Uh, the Wheel of Names is for Art Commission. Uh, you can get some art from the uh, wonderful Hex class. Right, Hex? Right. Also, Era, I'm sending this version of the song to you. Uh, basically, 3 minutes 40 seconds. Onwards. This encapsulates everything, and it's so good. Hold on, I'll get to it. I'll add it yeah. to my list. The commissions are thirty-three dollars for lined and seventy-seven for colors. <laughs> Or there is a crown redem redemption for lines as well that's still available. Apparently you're becoming a sandbar for $33, <laughs> according to your subtitles. Oh, that's, uh, that, that's, uh, interesting. Yep. Oh, pal! <laughs> I think we lost Zim. He has been consumed by puppy. I have been consumed to by be fair, That was a fate that would always joke. befall Zim. Hello, Zolet! I'm doing the spin in just a moment. Oh no, I gotta do another hydrate. No! <laughs> no. Uh -huh. Uh, Jeffy, you can also pay through biddies or, uh, well, I, I don't really want to can, uh, I mean, there, there, there's a few different ways that you could pay, uh, without PayPal, uh, biddies, uh, Patreon, I, I, you can do a month on there and, uh, <laughs> get that, uh, in that way, uh, Technically, you could also do uh, gift subs, but of course, those would be kind of expensive because I only get about half of it. So, you know, that that would be uh, you, you kind of have to pay double through those. So I don't really want to uh, suggest that. Oh, how am I feeling, Alan? I'm still stressed, but I'm feeling a little better. Jace, 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 Jace. Chase! What? We we should do a a snuggle pile on Spectre. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I feel like Spectre will murder you both with his knife. We can put the um, murder knife away for tonight. It's fine. I'll bite just, you. Ju just like he murdered potatoes. <laughs> 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 Okay, let's do this spin. Ready to work. Oh, 
And oh. then I do things gets in there. Oh, we can I'm spin sorry. again. What's up? I said we can spin again. I don't mind. Oh, okay. We all know who's going to win anyway. I mean, you just won. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I want to win twice. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Glorious confidence. You're just asking to get spited by this. Well, if I do, I do. It's not a big deal. Okay. And spin to win! Demacia! Congratulations, I do things. You won! There you go. Congrats. I thought you were going to win again, right? I did in heart. <laughs> you did in heart. Alright, I do things. Send me what you want uh, on Discord and I'll get the hex to get to the drawings and stuff. <laughs> I mean, to be fair though, like, I mean, if the rest of the evening is only just me and Taldarius, I'm pretty sure I've got a good chance. <laughs> Now you say that. But, uh, you know how much I like uh, talking about hoisting in the tards. <laughs> oh, don't talk about your own petards, then. <laughs> it's not my... I'm not the one getting hoisted. On hey, the right, what time did you say? Oh, well... Oh, I wow. doing? I am the eepiest Amos. I bet you are. Fair, fair. So we were talking titles? Yes. We need to come up with yep. a new name for the system. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. While we wait for... Oh, that is very spicy art. Why don't you read up some know. of the suggestions from your suggestion channel? That's what I was about to do. Well, you're quiet. Yeah, I need operating. to turn you up, Hex. Oh! Nano 8-bit Shadox tipped $77, adding more odds. Uh, oh, <laughs> um... Well, uh... Mm -mm. That's not technically how it works, Nano. Uh, you, you would have paid if you won the wheel, but uh, we do also have the doodle page uh, stuff going, so that's okay. <laughs> we'll get you on there. He's yeah. just paying it forward. I will have arts. Nothing will stop me from getting arts. It kind of makes me think of just like like a rich person just like coming in and just like slaps down like 10,000 bucks is like, I want your car. What? Uh, what? <laughs> okay. Here you go. I have been... No, my chat's trying to drown me. <laughs> nah, no, we'll oh, get the other What's what? up? I said you're what? My chat's trying to drown me. <laughs> oh. Hydrate! Hydrate or dihydrate. <clears throat> Well, Nano, for uh, for future reference with these art wheels, uh, so you've got the doodle page where if you tip to the channel anytime that the uh, tip goal down there has the uh, exclamation point doodle or exclamation point DP or uh, something along those lines, uh, it means that any tips get you on the doodle page, uh, the next one that we do. Um, but those ones are a little bit more restricted, where you only get three words as a prompt, you send ref, and the artist comes up with whatever they come up with. Uh, that said... Well, I'll go ahead I mean, and, if you don't want the 77, I'll take it. Well, no, no, I'm, I'm just explaining how it works. <laughs> uh, the art wheels let you actually specify what you're getting. Ah, no worries, Nano, I'm just explaining. Um... We'll go ahead and let you have that uh, commission. It might be done later just because it kind of wasn't on the wheel and 
Uh, but we'll let you have that. Just tell me what you would like. It, it'll be done by either uh, Hex here or Mirai. Whoever becomes available. Flowers had J's. What did I do? Exist. I mean, I can't really help that. You know that, right? Flowers. I mean, sure you can. Jet managed it. Who's Jet? <laughs> it goes dog. Sorry, I couldn't resist on that one. It was too easy. No. Silence, you. Sorry. Not, not all of you. Uh, I, uh, I didn't hit the mute button hard enough. Gives Jace bread. Burt Rur? Feels the bread. Jace just got bread. Let's go. I have been breaded and then debreaded for my time. Well, I guess we'll have to get you the other kind of bread. I mean, what? Wow. <laughs> What's the other? Oh. Wow. Wow. Let's just say, let's be glad the there's no there's no snakes in chat right now. Ooh, where I got Did I ever show you the art I got of uh, BTF again to uh, Bethel Gammon? I don't think so. Put it in art. Oh, okay. Which art? Uh, Archer. Which Archer? CGF. Okay. And you can also look at my, my stupid... New Yorker wear rat character. He just in shared with 250 eggy bitties. How does Asher like the dice now? Three ah! bitties. Ah! They, 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 they still don't taste very good. Okay, I'm looking. Oh, there you go. I put in Archer. Hey, looks pretty good. Yeah. Glad to see somebody TFing into it. It's a good form. Yeah. And to any, since we, I know we've got a few new people over in my chat, um, something they will probably hear often is TF talk, transformation talk. That's something that I and those around me tend to be very enthused by. So just as a warning. TF enjoyers. Also, I put another one of me turning into a Renamon and Zelo turning into a Gammon. Gammon! Gammon! Oh, wait, I forgot I had that one colored. Oh, here's the colored version. Oh, quick. Ah, I've been given. Oh, I had more ramen thrown in my face, one in my at my lowest point today. Oh, thank you, Zoro. I guess I will appreciate the mess. There's the colored version. Oh, well, that's a good one. I like that. If only more Digimon were more TFable. Yeah. I mean, I'll be honest, it's it's a little difficult to work around some of the more evolved forms because they're just like, this is a tank, but it's not tank. Refrigerator <laughs> with mini guns. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, well, let's go and get uh, on to the main thing here. All right, what do you got? Uh, I wish Theta was here. But, uh, so, suggestions so far, uh, this one's serious, so I'll just do it in my regular voice for now, um, we've got Rad System, role-playing animals mm -hmm. in dungeons. 
Uh, and by the way, you guys can look at these on the Brainstorms and Theories uh, channel on the Discord. Uh, we've got Stories and Critters. We've got Sable, Stories about Beasts Living Elsewhere. Pax, Playing as Critters System. Scar, Stories of Critters in Alternate Realities. Uh, another suggestion of Sable, Sapient Animals, Bequeath, Legends, and Epics. I don't know about that one. <laughs> yeah, that's a <laughs> bit of a mouthful. We've got multiple suggestions involving Martin from Woe. Uh, Multi-application roleplay to every niche. Multi-application roleplay 10. Uh, Multi-application roll 10s. Uh, we've got Paw, Parallel Animated Worlds. Um, we have Paws, Playing Animals in World Spectacular. Uh, another one involving Paws, Playing Animals in Worldly Settings. Uh, I like that world. What was that first one for Paws? First one for pause. Yeah, playing uh, animals in World Spectacular, I think you said. Yeah. I like that one. And then Star. Strange Tales in Alternate Realities. Strange Tales in Alternate Realities makes it sound more like it's sci-fi UFO based. Well, I mean, you could come up with one, Nano. Uh, I'm still open to suggestions here. Like, Yeah, this is just the current list. This is the current list, yeah. Um, as far as the suggestions so far, I think my favorite is the Scar one. Um, mostly because it encompasses you know everything that the uh system of is about only problem mm -hmm. is scar does feel a little aggressive is the term i kind of want to use on this which is entirely fair it, it feels a, like scar itself feels i don't think Aggressive is the proper term, but th that's the term that comes to mind. But at the same time, it's acronym, you know, stories of critters in alternate realities. That's literally everything the, the system's about, you know. I, yes. I would, I, I do say. Good. Go ahead. Uh, no, go ahead. Okay, I was just going to say that it also did come with the suggestion of, uh, Giving the little uh, little mascot boyo, we have a little scar over an eye. Yes, I agree with that. I think it works honestly pretty decently. It's not bad at all, and I think you could do a lot of really interesting things for like the the cover art or the mascot and such. A lot of beast claws, like tearing at paper, sort of thing. E. Yeah. I mean, I like it, and I definitely think it should be considered on the back burner. I'm just kind of orienting myself towards, like, the paws or other similar ones uh, that suggest that this is an animal system. This is based on on, on animals yeah. and and different worlds. So anything that really suggests either of those two, I'm, I'm, of, I'm a fan on. Something like Scar, Martin, anything like that, it, seems, it sounds maybe a little bit too specific. Though Scar can kind of be like, you know, um, wiggle has a bit of wiggle room. I'm confused by what you mean there, because the Scar is you mean all like, of that. Do you mean like in the acronym itself? In the acronym itself, yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, okay.
Yeah, because I was also confused with that. I I, I kind of like thought about it a little bit. I'm mean, like, I think he means like in the acronym proper. The acronym and the words therein, I I feel should relate to the yeah. to the actual purpose of the system. Well, the words within Scar are definitely the most accurate to the system of all the suggestions that we've had. Um, however, like playing animals in World Spectacular, like, the spectacular part especially, uh, just throws me off personally. I don't know why. Oh, oh, I've yeah, replaced you know? that S with maybe like a system, like playing animals in world system. Actually, Merle brings up a very good point. That is a very, uh, a very common thing. Um, a, a rather common saying that scars themselves do tell a story. True. Oh, that is mm -hmm. true. Yeah. Although, let me let me ask you this: If one were to say. Uh, let's go play some Scar. What is the thing that they're going to think of? Well, true, but it's also the same with let's go play some Paws. That... Yeah. Oh, wow. well, Paws at least suggests animal theming. And again, I'm not I'm not saying like we have to go with yeah. Paws or anything like that, but at least like, hey, let's go play some Paws. You kind of get a, a rough idea of what it, the system is, like what's going on. All right, sorry about that. I'm back. I pulled myself out of that rabbit hole. You're good. Oh, okay. So, like, yeah, pause does reference animals, definitely. Um, and, and yeah, Jaffer, but uh, we're not necessarily trying to tie the system to me. So, uh, otherwise, you know. Yeah. We would absolutely be going for Martin because, you know, everybody's liking... Well, at least a lot of people are liking that suggestion, but uh, we're not yeah. necessarily wanting it tied specifically to me. I will say it's definitely the most creative of the uh, of the suggestions, but we are kind of trying to avoid tying it to one person in particular. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we just... I think we just have to look at it from a consumer point of view. If somebody were to come across the system randomly, either it was mentioned to them or they they view it on a website or whatever like what's going to be their initial impression how are we going to draw people into the product and how are we going to be able to tell our story with our initial impression yeah uh, i think one thing that we're kind of hoping for that is that it's uh regardless of the acronym that it's the words like it's written out as a part of like the prompt that people first see yeah, yeah i will I say yeah i will say that while we'll often refer to it by the acronym like the actual book itself the title is going to be what the acronym spells out mm -hmm. um just because like you know dungeons and dragons does that uh starfinder pathfinder Though, granted, Starfinder and Pathfinder don't really acronym much. <laughs> um, but... Yeah. PFSF? I mean, yeah, they've got that, but I don't usually see them referred to as those. They're yeah. usually written out. Um, I'm trying to think of others. I know there's I'm, Swords I'm actually... and Sorcery. Oh, well, they're... Okay. So there's um there's WFRP which is uh Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. Mm -hmm. Uh but like you know the like even if you even if you just look at like D&D &D is a household name. And if you don't know what D&D &D means it means nothing. Yeah. Which automatically kind of loses some of some of its power just based on that alone. The only reason why it's it's recognized it's just because it just it's so big it was one of the first if not the first 
Uh, from what I know of the history, that it, it was the first. Yeah. So it kind of gained notoriety just on that. What was that, Tom? But like, um... Uh, so when it comes to, uh, at least like tabletop RPGs, uh, the first commercially available role-playing game was Dungeons and Dragons, but mm -hmm. at the time it was actually marketed as a uh, war game, like uh, the kind where like you know you would put down models and like uh, simulate a war. Uh, but it is the first commercially available, although there were like custom household ones that were available before. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, I'm actually looking at a list of tabletop role-playing games, and we can maybe pick up some inspiration from that as, like, what is good, what is not good. Like, for example, there's one here called Seventh Sea. What do you think that game means? What do you think that game is? Probably Pirates and Explorers. Exactly. Pirates, boom, right on the money. What about something like 3 d and T? What is that? Uh, I have no clue about that. No idea. I would assume anime. a dungeon exploring. Really? It's anime, yeah. There mm. it says here it was a Brazilian generic system turn to anime style campaigns. But you wouldn't you wouldn't get that from the title. So something like 3 d and T, probably some to avoid, but 7 C, that's a, like right on the money. It doesn't have to be a complicated thing. Hell, we don't even need to make an acronym. Well, yeah, but that we, the the part of the point was that uh, we care more about the contents than the acronym itself. That's like the the, the discussion. Yeah, but uh, I mean, something just simple yeah. like creatures and worlds, ha. <laughs> well, creatures in worlds is very non like. That, that's probably a little bit too non-specific. There was an RPG called Furry Pirates. Uh, we got a suggestion here from Nano of Swirl, stories within universes relived. Uh, maybe. Um, that reminds me of Shadowrun. Well, looking at the more popular games, um, like there's World of Darkness. Uh, that yep. one does it, 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 especially with it being, you know, World of Darkness is just the overarching one. It's, you know, Mage the Ascension, Werewolf the Apocalypse, etc., yeah. etc. So those ones definitely give you an idea <laughs> of what you're getting into just from the title. Um. Wait, I have a suggestion. What's that, Hex? Animals role-playing right in up. Worlds Hold Unknown. The this hamlet shall not fall. Dokidaka raided my stream with three viewers. Okay. J uh, write that uh, in the Brainstorms channel for me, Hex. Okay. So I can see it written out. And Doki Daka, thank you very much for that raid. How was your stream? Um, I know one of the, at least in Europe, specifically Germany, uh, the most popular tabletop RPG there is called uh, the Schwarze Alga, which just means the black eye. Which, you know, has an object that people are attempting to locate, the titular black eye. Oh. But, yeah, so it's, uh, that's the most pop- it's more popular than D&D &D in Germany, specifically. Oh, nice. But, yeah, yeah that, that gives you an idea of what you're- what you're looking at. The black eye. Ooh, that's mysterious. That's probably fantasy-related. It is. It's D&D, &D, but it's different. Yeah. But I, I just want to point out that there's, like, you know, other- where it doesn't really tell you much off the get-go, but it has, like, a relation to the actual, um... Yeah. To the actual, like, story within. 
Hey, Doki, thank you so much again for that raid. And you were dying in the swamps of Valheim? Did a group stream with some bird buddies? Very nice. Oh, I hope you had a good stream. D did you get joined by the Woe? Then again, I'm not sure if the Woe classifies as a uh, bird fully. I mean... <laughs> He, he probably properly uh, classifies as a weapon of mass destruction. No, no, just shapeshift. Which yeah. also includes that. <laughs> I, I, I like calling him a weapon of woe. I like that. <laughs> just the meme of his name being Nuclear in it. Nuclear launch detected. <laughs> Well, very nice, Doki. Uh, right now, we're trying to figure out a new name for our tabletop system. Yeah. But yeah, I, I will say that um, I prefer focusing more about the contents of the message compared to just trying to f make a fun acronym. And I, I, uh, honestly, I'm kind of I'm kind of leaning in that direction too. Most because as I'm looking through this list, there's actually a surprisingly not a lot of acronyms on it. There's yeah, they're they're, they're the minority for sure. Yeah. I mean, having an acronym is fun. Like I, I'm not gonna lie, it definitely is more fun than not having one. But I care more about the message of the uh, of the system more than making uh, a good animal acronym. Other creature STG storytelling game oh yeah beans and batting <laughs> <laughs> what was your suggestion hex oh, ran into help <laughs> um, what oh, i'm writing it out i don't know i messed with my mic i think it's all working oh okay um So, when it comes to Scar, um, Fang Fantasy Animal Narrative Game, hmm. Not a bad suggestion, I do things. Though, I will say that uh, part of the intention of the system is to be a bit more... Uh, generalized and not specific to any one time period. ARFs, animals role playing in fantastical settings. I kind of <laughs> like that. ARF. <laughs> ARWU, animals role playing in worlds unknown. I like that too. I, do. I like I, I... ARF, but I'm kind of leaning away from animal and towards something like, say, creature. That's why I've been going with creatures since we are like we have like the Digimon, Pokemon, yeah. stuff like that. I mean, technically they're still animals. And uh, if we're gonna do Monster Hunter, well, if we say technically they're still animals, that's also with the like understanding that humans are animals. It's along the same thing, but not exactly the Doki Daka no creature. That is bad. What did Doki <laughs> See you <laughs> later, uh, Jaffer. The, ac the acronym was unintentional. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Still. Bad. <laughs> What's the system, Alan? Uh, the system is one that my friend here is actually making himself. We're trying to come up with a title for it. Yep. Uh, I will say fair, that this is me part. Oh, God. Uh, to be fair, while I am the primary person working on it, I'm not the only one. 
There's lots of people involved. Well, it's easier it's easier to say you as opposed yeah. to you and literally everybody uh, that I don't know. <laughs> I'm very much yeah, resistant to um, urge. Go ahead. So I do just want to say that like and like, you know, this is kind of my position in, in like when we were coming up with the like the, the first time we were trying to come up with a name, uh, I want to try to stay away from gimmick names. At least personally. It's fine if you guys outvote me on that. I just, I just want to say that, like, you know, I'm still on the uh, on the team of I, I don't really want to do too many, like, meme gimmick names. Yeah, same. Well, there is the simple stories and critters. That one I'm I I do like. I'm also one that I kind of thought of was like fantastical creatures and their worlds. Um, something simple like that could, you know, say everything that you need to hear. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, and Alan, uh, I'm sorry that you got ads. I was saying that the game was made by my, um, or the system's being made by my friend here. We're simply coming up with a title for it. Um, he, he, he's been doing a very community-based approach in the development of this system. What's it about? Well, this is a system that allows you to play as like Pokemon, Digimon, Monster Hunter, like all sorts of different fan, uh, fantastical creatures, for lack of a better term, that don't have their own necessarily role playing systems or their role playing systems might be a bit lacking. This is a, supposed to be a sort of a catch all system that allows you to play a lot of those other kind of genres um, that are otherwise inaccessible to tr more traditional role playing systems like D&D. Yeah, it's one basically in this system you're playing magical animals. Yeah, or critters would probably be the better catch-all term. Or creatures. I think creatures is probably the better. If we do if we do end up going with some variation of of scar, I will say that I'd probably prefer saying creatures instead of critter. I was just saying critter because it was the first one that came to mind. Uh, we are trying to avoid any specific animals, Doki. Um, while I love Martins, uh, I, I, I don't really want to have, uh, I, I don't want it tied to any one particular animal. Yeah. Awoo. Oh. Yeah. I mean, or heck, even one particular species. Yeah. Hmm. Um, hmm. <laughs> about something like say with a lot of commas like stories creatures and worlds which is what i've kind of put in brainstorm already because i had uh stories worlds and creatures or creatures worlds and stories with uh, stories worlds and creatures the acronym that would be SWAC. <laughs> But I'd say maybe something that might help to make us a bit more efficient. Maybe we should start putting down suggestions on like a piece of paper and start crossing off ones we know for a fact we're not going to use and the reason why we're not going to use them. And then we can start edging ourselves into the direction we want to go in. Yeah, probably. Because, I mean, spitballing is, is all well and good, but it might be a while before something sticks, and by then it, it could be overrun by another suggestion.
Uh, no, Gib Gab, that's too much. Uh, definitely not Anthro Adventures, because, uh, this is not specifically Anthro. In fact, a lot of those that will be playing this game, it will be, uh, quadrupeds. Or literally just metallic balls, or amorphous goo, things like that. Um, Powerpuff Girls, you know how it goes. There's a reason I said multi-application. Yeah. <laughs> It's just a shame that it happens to line up as such uh, when it's not intended. <laughs> uh, we have Ultimate Adventure World as a suggestion for my chat. By the way, real quick, I do want to specify for everybody. All of these suggestions, if we do go with your suggestion, you are giving up any claim to it. Um, just to make sure oh, that is course. very clear. Yeah. That's the expectation of giving it over as a uh, publicly released system and such. Yeah. Well, the, the, the problem is, is that people like to play games, so. Yeah. Oh, I see. I, I just want it made perfectly clear that that is the case here. Um... So if you're giving these suggestions and we decide to go with yours, that your claim to that suggestion is just done. <laughs> uh, I do things. That one makes it sound like it's a general role-playing supplement, not yeah. a system. Storyteller's Bestiary is something like Monster Manual. It, it's something that you would not... It, it wouldn't really work for this. That said, we could absolutely use that as a title for a supplement uh, book because um, oh, down yeah. the line, I've been thinking of coming up with our own list of creatures and such for people to potentially play, you know, our own fake mon, basically. But... <laughs> wow. Creatures Unleashed Universal Realms. Separate mm. suggestions. Oh, okay. Technically, they smashed together. I just didn't think of it. Again, they kind of... It kind of sounds supplementy to me. Yeah. Um... Yeah, it, it just invokes the uh, Pathfinder's uh, Unleashed books. All right, or I about Unchained, those. or whatever they yeah. are. Yeah, it's, uh -huh. it's Unchained, but yeah. Hmm. And Universal Realms, like, it's not exactly the same, but it just makes me think it's going to be, like, either about planes or Unearthed Arcana, that kind of stuff. That's the sort of vibe it's given. This is why I spend months trying to name even one of my settings. <laughs> yeah. One thing I liked with the Rao was that it uh, opened up the other worlds thing as that was going to be a com campaign supplement that I was going to work on after the actual system's done. Um, you know, kind of like d and has got Faerun and Eberron. You've got Pathfinder with uh, Galeria or whatever it's called. Galarian. Galarian? Yeah, Galarian. I'm actually working on the story right now in Pathfinder's universe. So, Kerr, what are you liking out of these various suggestions? Um, I like Scar. I like, and I like Arf. Uh, both of those are the ones that I I personally really like a lot. 
Um, Awu is also good, if uh, that's the one I was thinking of. Uh, they're all written in Brainstorms and Theories on the Discord. Okay. Um, um, and then there's also the simple Stories and Critters suggestion. I think that one actually could work. Like, not overcomplicating it, just being very simple and such. I actually think is a is a plus. Like, the systems are already going to be complicated enough for people to understand. Just having a very simple name and title for people, I think, could be very good to have. Yeah, I, I, about, I, I will say that... Oh, go ahead. I was saying, how about something like Creature Tales, then? That sounds pretty cute. I like that one. Ooh, that, that is actually kind of cute. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to lie. That, that, actually, that actually is very, very cute. Well, let's... Uh, I, I think a lot of people are liking that. Uh, let's... Dragon Tales, Dragon Tales. Well, there is already a Creature Tales. Um, apparently it's Creative and Social Innovation in Health, Community, Education, and Tourism. What? <laughs> I feel like we're very <laughs> different than that. that. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> Can you say that again? I don't think I heard that right. Creature Tales is uh, it's apparently in Australia, based on the domain. Um, creative and social innovation in health, community, education, and tourism. I feel like ours is separate enough that we shouldn't have any problem on the... Yeah, I would agree. Aspect. I feel like we are uh, very different. Uh, another problem is that there is is a book series called Creature Tales. Mm, that's yeah. a problem. There Just add on the STG. There, there is a book series... Um, Ritter Tales. <laughs> the other problem is that there is also apparently a podcast. Okay, mm. yeah, so that, that would definitely... We have a book and a other entertainment thing that's already taking that up. That's well, we could always add to the title then. See if that gives us enough yeah. of a difference. They like, um, for example, you could put ZGF Creature Tales or something like that, or STG Storytelling yeah, Game. STG. I mean, Z adding ZGF to it is uh, probably not a bad idea. Um, ZGF presents Queer Tales. The one thing that I do want to ask about that particularly, though, is that we were attempting to not, like, tie it too far down to the community itself. Yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm not necessarily we saying we have to go this for... Out of it. Yeah, I'm not saying we necessarily have to go for something like ZGF, but just something-esque. Like, it could literally be, like, um... Director presents, or or any one of a number of things. Just simply adding on to the title might give us that difference we're looking for. Well, when it comes to that, I will say like ZGF is going to basically be the, I guess the best term for it would be publisher for this system. Um, like as part of getting this released, I will be actually properly starting ZGF as a company of some variety uh -huh. um yeah. so having zgf as part of the title isn't a bad idea okay. um or at least like it's at least gonna be on the tie on the on there somewhere um okay. in that case we probably it shouldn't be in the title if it's also the publisher yeah it probably won't be in the title um Let's see. Critter Tales is also taken. 
Damn, we finally get one that we all really like, and it's very much taken. To be fair, the shorter the title, the more likely it is that it's already taken. Yeah. But if that, we can, if we can still so argue true. difference enough, we might be able to make it. Yeah, the, the problem is, is that it's generally by, uh, uh, by sector. So if it was like, you know, just the, uh, if it's like in a different sector where it's like about education, we could easily say, oh yeah, we're not education, doesn't apply to us. Because yeah. that's how copyright works. But the problem is, is that there's a book and there's an entertainment thing already for it. So that makes it a lot harder to argue in terms well, we of copyright. Just, I said, let's just add in like an adverb or something like fantastical creature tales or terrific creature tales or amazing creature tales. Worlds of Venting Stories, Creatures and Roleplay, Whisker. Oh, <laughs> that, that's a bit mouthy. Yeah. Yeah, people might just <laughs> call it Whisker. Can also, I'm a little bit weird in saying I don't know. That, that it's the... Um, the one thing that I am leery about that name is that it's implying it's that's the world that there's like worlds creating it instead of it being. Yeah, I'll be right back. I will do that um, while I do a thing. Hmm. I'm just looking up, uh... Stories and Critters seems to be available. Out to check on something. Okay. Back to possibly away. We'll see. Oop. Also, Gib Gab, um, story. I saw you bring up the uh, acronym for stories and critters. Uh, more likely, it will be uh, people will uh, shorten it to SNC instead of SAC or the and sign. Yeah. I don't really I mean, yeah, want it called be. chaos because we're not necessarily going to have chaos for all of them. Just uh, lost in chaos. What one in particular? Starlight. But... I don't think I've ever thought of D and D as dad. That is. So yeah, funny. I don't think I ever have either. It never occurred to me, but that's probably <laughs> if you use the acronym properly. No, I mean it, it occurred to me, but I'm like, I wonder why they use the second letter, and then I go, Oh yeah, that's probably why. I never thought about it before, but now during one of these games, I'm going to have to call D&D &D Dad just to see people cringe. Not in this stream, I'll do it on mine. I mean, if you want to have a... Uh chaos in your game you're welcome to i just don't want it tied to chaos <laughs> uh, i guess the question is because i know you're looking at uh at stories and critters 
Um, oh, sure thing, Jerex. Have did you night. still? Did you still want to go with the uh, like? Like, are you still wanting to lean with uh, having something like uh, other worlds or alternate realities or whatever ending thing to lead into like an actual world supplement book? Or um, that is definitely not required. Um, yeah. because like, honestly. I'm actually struggling to think of... I mean, I guess there is uh, World of Darkness. That's the only one that comes to mind where it refers to the actual world setting itself. But even then, again, it's just... World of Darkness is usually left out and it's just Mage the Ascension or such. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Savage um, it, it, It's, it, it's oh, more Savage like Worlds. all of the war rule book. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like more most of the like World of Darkness like core rule books are more like supplements to the World of Darkness because they all kind of work together anyway. So yeah, but so it's more like flavored supplements. But looking at like D and D and Pathfinder, like those names do not involve the various worlds under them at all. Yeah. I just wanted to ask, is that, like, besides the fact that one makes an acronym and the other one does, that's pretty much, like, the only real difference between uh, the Scar suggestion and just going with, like, stories and creatures and or stories and critters or whatever variant of that we use. You're still doing the creature tales. You could add an adjective in front of it, I think Rygon said. Like, something like fantastical or role-playing role -playing creature tales, fantastical creature tales, but still feels like it might step on the toes of the other ones. Yeah, that is my only concern there is the uh... I, I'm not a lawyer. I don't know the details of how all of that stuff works. Um, I know some basics and in general it's best to just avoid it as much as you can. Yeah, Avoid because like, toes. it also depends about how, because it really does depend about how petty the other party is about it. Because, mm -hmm. like, you know, there's a lot of lawsuits that go on because, uh, like, two different musicians happen to use the same, like, fucking melodic riff in their, in, like, both of their songs. How about this? How about we just simply message them and just say, hey, we're thinking of using this as our title. Would that cause any problems? Diplomacy, I like it. I mean, worst thing that they can say is like, mm, yeah, that might be a bit too much. Uh, we would probably have a problem with that and they, they would let us know. So why not just ask? Uh, well, let me see if I can figure out the... Uh... I mean, Critter Tales, uh... Critter Tales is probably good to use. Like, as far as it goes, there are... a very large number of things that also use that, but... Um... None of them are specific enough for this. What is this? Yeah, the only thing that I want to be worried about for Critter Tales is that it sounds very juvenile focused. It does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's a cute name, though. To be fair, Kerr, um, does cute really apply? Wait, who'd we lose? Where are you? Oh. Uh -huh. 
Uh, would, would cute really apply to your uh, to the Digimon world that you've been creating? <laughs> it's cute. The characters may be cute in it. The world itself is definitely not cute. Mm, agree to disagree. So, as far as this go, as far as Creature Tales goes, um, I think we can just... Nano has a good point. We could just throw it in and there. And or and. Creature and Tales. Creature and Tales. Well, at that point, we could just... There's... I mean, yeah, but... It's kind of in the same vein as, like, stories and creatures. It's, it's the same kind. I say we just put a pin in that particular one, ask the people that we need to ask, and see if we can think of something else, or mm -hmm. just wait until we get the results well, back from that. The problem with that is, is that uh, we also kind of needed... Because we're going through an entire rebranding process, and in order to stream and market like additional games in this that we're doing, like you know, the Pokemon games and the Digimon game, uh, we need to have art and stuff done for the streaming part of it. So if we don't get something resolved soon, and by soon, like, uh, you know, very soon. As in next, uh, uh, next week was the time I think we put on it. It's going to be very difficult to actually, like, you know, run the games for now. And that, that's something that got... was brought up, which is why I'm a bit, uh, leery about it. Well, fair enough. It seems like either way, though, I mean, some games are just going to have to go without, without that for a bit. I mean, we got a game, what, tomorrow? Yeah, that's why I said the, the thing was next week. For that. Yeah. Okay, so... I am not worried about the podcast... Like, it is a, like, it is its own thing. It's a podcast instead of, um, you know. Our, our, our shows themselves are not called Creature Tales. They're just using the system. So I don't think it conflicts with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a beast and creatures, myths and tales. That's far enough away that I'm not worried. Yeah, that's far enough away. I saw that one too. Yeah. You know? There is this creature tales penguin TAS. What is this? Be right back. I gotta start getting my snakes food ready for tonight. Nom noms. Yeah, it's looking like this other creature tales thing that I'm seeing here is about music. Uh, there was a there was another one that was a book. Yeah, I'm just going through the list here. Yeah. There is a book here, Tales from the Animal Kingdom, which that one by itself is also, I feel, far enough away from what we're looking to do. I would agree. Oh, yeah. But there's uh, one called, uh, what, was, what was it? Creature Tales, Tales from the Animal Kingdom. That's the one I was or just the, talking about. The main about. title. Okay. Yeah. I feel like that's far enough away because we're not doing real life stuff. 
Well, well this one is, uh... What about some animal stories to stir your imagination? From flipping whales to dumb donkeys. Uh, creature tales will unlock your dormant power to dream of a magic land. We're a role-playing game. That sounds more like pseudoscience. <laughs> also, their full title is Tales from the Animal Kingdom. Oh. Or with the, yeah, uh, but it refer tales. it's referred to as Creature Tales. Yeah. It's referred to as Creature Tales in the thing, so... Good What's up, Will? I know it's not exact, but it's it's close enough that I'm leery about it. Oh, poor Jace got pushed off screen. No. Sorry, Jace. You're off screen now. Let me see if I can fix that. There you go, you're back on screen. Mm. Well, let's check the other variety of T-A-I-L instead of... Not as many people have probably used that one. Uh, see ya, whoa. Well, as far as I can tell, T-A-I-L has not been used. So, what do you guys think of that? What was it again? What is... uh, Creature uh, Tales, but it's like tales of the, like, you know, uh, as in the body part. Ah. I think that sounds fine. It's something that's easy to remember, easy to say. It it represents, uh, at, at least in part, what we're trying to, to state, like what we're trying to show. So, yeah, I, I'd agree with that. Mm -hmm. Hey, Lexi. Well, anyone opposed to it? No? Or creature tales? Is it bad that yeah. I thought this entire time was going to be spelled T-A-I-L-S? I also I thought it was going to be spelled that way, too. Uh, you, no, nothing for me. It sounds fine. Uh, it's a. It's not quite as serious as I'd prefer, but I certainly don't think it's bad. So. It. Yeah, it's something we can always. Again, just I'm, I'm, I'm the more, more serious. I'm the more serious one. So. <laughs> All right, we'll it's just not, call it gritty creature tales. No, nah, that blood gut creature tales. I said. I said serious, not grimdark. Taxes creature tales. Oh God, no. Oh. But no, I do agree with you, Taldarius. Um, I just can't think of anything better, honestly. Yeah. I mean, I still like... I, I still personally like Scar better because I feel like it encapsulates better, but, uh, you know, people have reservations about that one, so I'm not going to be, like, you know, all... Bleh, 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 bleh.
Because I want to make it clear that I, I definitely don't... I, I, I definitely don't dislike Creature Tales. With, like, the, the tail spelling. As in Animal Park. A little waggy wag. Creature tales and doing your taxes. <laughs> does that make it more? Does that make it better for you there, uh, Taldarius? More mature? No. <laughs> no, that it just makes it sound dumb. <laughs> I already, I already said that no, because it made it sound dumb when it just got mentioned taxes. <laughs> Besides, once I brought it up, Ragot Raga even agreed with me on it, so it's not like I'm just being blah blah blah. Yeah, I I do I do agree, um, but at least it doesn't sound like super juvenile either. Like it sounds like it's a yeah. something. I just don't want it to be something forgettable. Yeah, whatever it is we choose uh, at the end of the day, it just can't be something that's forgettable. Alright, so right now, I think we have three main... Like, the strongest contender is definitely uh, Creature Tales, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, we've got two other uh, main contenders, it seems. Uh, stories and Critters, or Stories and Creatures. Probably Stories and Creatures. Uh, and Scar. Yeah. Which has the same two alternates of stories and creatures and stories and critters. Because it's kind of the same beginning. Yeah. I just wish we could get Seda in here. Yeah. Yo. Yeah. He would know what to do. Uh, actually, here, let me see if I can message him real quick. I know right now he's in Abby's stream. Uh, maybe ask them if they could possibly pop over, because I wouldn't mind Abby's input as well. Um, go ask them if maybe they can pop in for a minute, uh... Settle the name. Yeah, I don't have access to their uh, to their uh, channel. So I, I was meaning the you could go poke their stream chat or something. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll do that. Or Dunbrain. Yeah, Dunbrain. You're you're in their chat. I'm sure already. Yeah, just let them know that we're fi we're we're trying to finalize. We we have final name picks. We're trying to finalize. Yeah. So yeah, we we just want their feedback for like. Maybe 15 minutes. I'll go ahead and preemptively turn off the feed through on Discord. You know, oh, considering no. I'm not actually doing anything on the document, I guess I could have had this uh, in this method. With this uh, set up for oh, well. right now. Oh no, Alan is bringing out the tentacles. He says caution, I think. I don't know, I don't have glasses. And then he has a tiny man. Is the tiny man going to fight the tentacles? <clears throat> oh, a dancing little dragon guy. Dancing, dancing, dancing.
Hex, I love how you are drawing Squirrel as getting pelted in the face by the payday move. You said he would be very excited. Wouldn't he be a bit distracted? Oh, definitely. I, I am not against this. I, I said I love it. <laughs> What's wrong, Alan? Why are you sad? So apparently my cat got jealous that I was giving the snake attention. As mm. cats are wont to do. And now I have a yep. cat on my lap, and I had to put the snake away. I... <laughs> and you can make all the jokes okay. you want about that one. I'm not. I thought of them, though. I'm sure everybody did, and I didn't think about it until it left my mouth. As Asher is crawling into Jace's lap, too. <laughs> oh, no. Don't chew on my cat. No. Yes, I will chew on your cat. It's taking I mean, my that... spot. <laughs> that bothers me less than my cat chewing on my keyboard. Nom, nom, nom. Alan, why are you so sad? But the Seda. Look, Hello, I was telling me you needed to use blue candles. All right, we got a question for oh, you. Which okay. one? Which one sounds better, Cre Critter Tales or Creature Tales or Scars? Well, um, real well, quick there's is, more options than that. There's three. Is Abby oh. coming too, or Abby won't be joining us? Uh, but he does appreciate the offer. Okay, I will. Re I will relay to him um, the options um, separately. He just he he's having some very nice vibes. Okay. Oh, okay. All right, so our three options that we've kind of narrowed it down to. Stories and creatures, or critters, uh, probably creatures. Uh, the Scar suggestion, uh, stories, creatures, and alternate realities. And creature tales. Uh, the tales would be T-A-I-L-S. Because T-A-L-E-S has multiple contenders to it. But tails, as in the animal part, does not. We're talking about cop. Hmm. I'm assuming there was an issue with the stars suggestion, or just too ungangly. Uh, star suggestion was kind of phased out as we were narrowing. Yeah. Very fair. It kind of invoked uh, specifically, like, sci-fi vibes and also kind of didn't involve, uh, I'm trying to find where it was, uh, like, Strange Tales in Alternate Realities was kind of like, I mean, it's a good name, but it doesn't really involve much of what the system is about at all. Hmm. I mean, I guess it's got the alternate realities part and then the But tales, it doesn't really have the creatures. Yeah. And we just wanted to try and make it as focused on the uh, main thing as possible. Hmm... A little dark force. I am good. We're doing some chatting and brainstorming right now, so that's why there's not much going on on screen at the moment. But feel free to hang out. So we have the scars system, um, and the other two seem to be kind of mirrored options of each other. The um. Uh, creature tales and stories and creatures with, like, you know, the 
stories and creatures, stories and critters, alternates. Yeah. I definitely don't like that that one. Kind of. Which one? Which one? Those stories and creatures. Too. And the alternative creatures and stories, it kind of just... Okay, so uh, I put in the Brainstorms and Theories channel here on the Discord the uh, list there for the final contenders. Mm -hmm. It can help to have them visually, you know, at least for me. Yeah, the, I, 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 you, you know me too well. Thank you very much. Oh, Alan, that's a fancy set of emotes. I'm about to be hit by a gay wizard. So much oh. rainbow. I do things. Thanks so much for coming by. I hope you sleep well. Bye bye. Thank you for the biddies earlier. Mm. I'm kind like so. I'm like taking the gasoline to stories and creatures in my mind because I just it doesn't seem very inspired I like creature tales though just because I think that could have like a really cool logo um big flowing tail um though Scar is kind of edging out in my mind Uh, just so you know, we are trying to think more about, like, uh, encapsulating the system more than, like, cover art. Yeah, and I am... I'm also trying to... look at it from the perspective of, okay, what, for me, feels recognizable? Um, or what could be, you know, long-term recognizable? Yeah, that's uh, kind of where I'm at as well. Like, Scar definitely feels like it would stand out most. Like, yeah, it's going to be a little difficult at first. But then again, D&D &D was difficult at first. Um, Pathfinder was difficult. Like, uh, But over time, like, they've become... Like, obviously Pathfinder's not as much of a household name as D&D, &D, but... It's still up there. Um, yeah. In the community, it is. Yeah. Just not as yeah. much in mainstream. Yeah. Pathfinder basically fights D&D &D as, like, the second game. Yeah. Except, I, I still just love the, the one exception of in Germany. There's just this one other system that's king in that particular spot. It's this very well, funny. Yes, you did, Alan. Why. The only reason I'm not just jumping on Scar is just that it feels a little aggressive. But other than that, it's perfect. <laughs> 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 like, that's the problem. It's like, it's so perfect and yet feels just a little aggressive. But at the same time, like Merle pointed out earlier, uh... Scars oh, oh, themselves oh, oh. tell a story. Oh, 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 okay, Zim, tell us where the dagger stabbed you. Uh, the left eye. H haven't you seen the scars there? I was about to say, like, that. that is where Zim's character does have scars. So, so you're telling me that wasn't animal claws, that was three perfectly parallel daggers in three separate fl throws. Okay, fair. Because that's some lore if I've ever heard one. <laughs> know, right? What are the odds? Like, what do you do? You have like a nemesis character who's just a knife throwing extraordinaire and manages to get the same dagger slice just perfectly equal distance away in a parallel line. Damn, I'm impressed. That's quite, quite the arch nemesis you got there. <laughs> 
if you like the order of them, or like the what's listed there, but you don't like the name Scar, you could alternate two of the letters. It wouldn't be as nice of an acronym. Kassar. If you made it creature stories in alternate realities, that would remove the scar from it. But I I was actually kind of thinking in the back of my mind, like, is there a way you could change the wording to kind of like take scar and turn it into like cast? But then like cast as a word, yeah, well sure kind of has like that kind of like magical implication, doesn't really in like my mind stand out. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it stands out as much as Scar would. Because that is also the advantage of it being kind of more aggressive is... Uh, a lot of people don't really name their stuff after it. Like, they probably had the same trepidations that I'm having right now with it. It would, it, it would stand out. Which is actually why, like, when we were having this conversation the other day, my kind of question went around to, is there, we can be very, very creative with the English language if we really want it to be. Um, so uh, an alternative approach was, okay, is there a, something you could see as a good name that, you know, we might just be able to, like, do some English language, you know, fudgery to, like, squeeze in. Um... Nothing has come to mind on that front. The only thing, like, the only thing that I've really been thinking of on all of that is just, uh, like, really, we just boiled it down to those three suggestions. It's just the Creature Tales, which does feel kind of generic, but it's not, it's cute. Uh, oh. Scar feels a bit, uh, what? I'm generic. <laughs> oh, <yes. sighs> uh, Scar feels a bit aggressive, but otherwise it's perfect. And then Stories and Creatures is extra generic. But it does also follow it, it, along it's like with that, the... That, 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 that's not vanilla ice cream, that's milk ice cream. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry for insulting whoever actually suggested that, but I'm just me. I'm gonna be critical. <laughs> my my criticism still stands. <laughs> yeah, something to take my mind off being generic. Oh, thank you, Merle. I appreciate it. What is it? It's the moon. Yay. Well, that'll definitely take your mind off of things. It'll get rid of my mind. Yeah. By the way, I stand in my last five seconds, and I want to thank my parents, Jeebus, and the capitalism, and I'm dead. By the way, Nano, I do need you to send me what you would like for the art on Discord, please. Because you haven't done that yet. All right, so I guess we're all going... I, I, it sounds like we're uh, kind of settling on Scar, then. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I will I will poke the Abby for Abby's thoughts. I oh, know, I still like mine. Uh, send but it via mine. DMs, Nano. Well, Blue, yes, but you're back. Okay. <laughs> and yes, I know that you can. You you I like what you just. What's up? Sorry, I I was drinking some water and went down the wrong pipe. Ah. You're not allowed to die. I know. We need to run the ascent to ascend. It's been off for two <laughs> I weeks. I got more to balance now, but yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> You're not allowed to let the Sunday I, I curse could... win. I know, I'm not. Um, 
But yeah, uh, what I was saying is, I know you came up with that suggestion, Rygon, for Creature Tales, but we gotta look at this subjectively. I'm looking at it subjectively. Subjectively, let's go. Objectively! What a, did I say I'm the wrong objectively word? Objectively subjective. No. Objection! Well, what's your vote then, Taldarius? Uh, I definitely don't think the other two are bad, but I, I still prefer Scars. Just because I feel like it encapsulates the entire system really well. And I like, uh, even though I did say that, like, you know, I prefer not having to worry about, like, you know, gimmicks and stuff, it's still nice to have an acronym for memorability. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Which, Kurt? No, I'm, like, oh. I... Oh, go ahead, sorry. Hex, what were you saying? Oh, I was just saying, the more I hear it, the more it's growing on me. <laughs> Scar is? We. Oui. Well, I, I mean, if you need to go do that, that, that there's probably a fire hydrant outside. Ah, uh -huh. <laughs> Scar, uh, was you your know? first choice, Merle? What was that, Rygon? I was saying, don't you know? Don't you mean our fire hydrant? It is red, after all. Oh. Yes, red communism memes. Let's go. Hey. Era. I would I would say I eat those up, but uh, you certainly don't under communism. Sir, yes, sir. What is your vote? <laughs> Scar is fine. It's kind of growing on me. I would worry that it sounds way too violent for my taste, but... That's what I've been thinking. At the same time, as long as it's just an acronym and we rely on calling it by its full name enough, I think that would help the situation. Yeah. Because <clears throat> if we just call it SCAR, I would worry people look at it as a violent thing, but it's an acronym, so if we, as long as we make it clear that it's an acronym, it's probably way better. Mm -hmm. Kind of like I the mech... I have to agree with you, Drunk Dragon, um, because I'm like I'm imagining in my head right now of like a little kid goes up to go goes up to his parent and it's like, "Mother, mother, may I play some scar?" <laughs> <laughs> considering I'm one of those kids that my mom threw away my MTG cards when I was a kid and my Pokemon cards during the Satanic yes. Panic, I can imagine how bad that would be. Yeah, that's oh, but that is that is kind of a niche scenario, but I, I, it's still a relevant one. To be fair, like there's no way, like in that scenario, that they wouldn't like you know try and show off like the cover art, and then it's like you know, it like has the actual name there, and it has like you know a little fucking mascot guy there, and it's just like oh, oh okay. we, we know at that point, like the parents is just going to say, yep. <laughs> That satanic material trying to get my child again. Oh, true. That satanic stuff, yeah. Oh, yeah, always hiding I... in them cute little bunnies and shit. Both me and my roommate have stories about that stuff. <laughs> yeah, so do I. I, I wasn't allowed I to play. I wasn't allowed to play Pokemon for the longest time because my parents thought it had sex in it. Yeah, my roommate wasn't allowed to either. I wasn't allowed. My MTG cards got thrown away, so did my Pokemon cards at one point. I had to hide my D&D books for years. My grandparents wouldn't let me do D&D &D up until seeing... Because I lived with them for finishing high school and such. Um, they, uh, oh. they wouldn't let me do D&D &D up until my senior year where... My English class was like, okay, we need you to do a, a research paper. Cool. I'm doing my research paper on D&D. &D. Oh, yeah, I remember. But yeah, that would be my only hesitation with SCAR. So, as I said, as one of those things where if you avoid the acronym or make it clear it's an acronym and call it by its full name, it's probably way better. Because I do like the name. But Welcome I know... Back, yeah. Even when I was, like, 19 going to college, my parents were really weird about games like that, so. Yeah. Honestly, I do agree. I think if we call it by its full name, that would help out a lot. And, yeah, it'll probably be annoying, but I'm sure we'll get used to it. 
So, what's the verdict, Seda? Um, Avi's eyes kind of lit up when he heard the scar, or story creatures and and, and story creatures and alternative realities. Uh, though he also did like creature tales. Yes. Uh, I didn't for, um, for, um, hard press for a pick because um, he's currently talking about plush fursuits. That's fair. Like in real life? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, he's currently doing a really cool, like, building International Space Station Lego set. So I'm not going to throw him off his vibe. That's fair. <laughs> So, uh, right. looks like uh, you got your answer. Well, uh, just to confirm, Seda, what was your uh, vote then? My vote, um, at the end of the day, I feel like I like the SCAR system. It's, um, the acronym is one that makes sense, it covers what you want, and the name itself is quite bold. Like, part of me feels like, you know, hey, give us, like, another, you know, Three to four weeks, we could probably come up with something really cool and fun. But in the f for the purposes of making a decision, um, I, I I like what we have with Scar. Um, All right, and Kerr, I don't know if I got your vote. I'm good with it. With what? Uh, with Scar. I think that's fine. All right. I think it's a good to high trade again. Oh, no. Then I think <laughs> we've got our answer. Let's okay. go play some Scar. And get Scar. Scar. Immediately upon the agreement being made that we, we wouldn't call it by its acronym too much, you immediately bug people by using its acronym first. <laughs> sure thing, Alan. You have yourself a wonderful evening and a good night. Thank you so much for being an awesome part of my chat. It's been awesome having you here. Thank you so much. All right. Yeah, what I, what I will probably say with, um, with that decision is... I'm of the mindset that I think it's the best one for what we have right now. But I think if, like, let's just say, like, two months from now, we're like, holy fudge, I actually don't like calling it the system like this. It feels weird. Like, it's it's, it's something that I don't want to consider an open shut case. Like, I think with everything with the system, like, what we call it should also equally be in flux. You know, not like, you know, constant, like, you know, changing, but like, be open to revisiting it. Yeah. Especially once we get to, like, I'm the final open. product. I'm open to the idea of revisiting it, although I'm going to be, like, it's going to take a lot for, to get me there, considering, you know, not only do we have to deal with the fact that, like, you know, even just changing the name is likely to mess us up, uh, we're, we're also, like, you know, doing community outreach and marketing and stuff for it, so. Very much so. Um, I, I, I think you're kind of probably worrying a bit better than you wording my sentiment a bit better like not bury ourselves and like marry the marry the name entirely but also we need to like you know it needs to be a damn good suggestion alternative before you know yeah, yeah. so that's... basically engaged but not quite married more or less like in, in, in my mind until the system is like probably like 100 percent done you know you're sending out the pdfs you're working on the supplements and stuff like that yeah then we're kind of married to it but in this kind of early stage where, like, there's no official, hey, here, here's the official document and rule set, go here. Yeah, we're not married to it, but yeah, I, I like the word, engaged. All right. Yeah, that, we can that, always throw the subtitle good. working project or whatever in case it does. Actually, I think that's a good point. Just like, you know, just be like Scar, Scar Stories, Creatures, and Alternative Realities, you know. Quote unquote working title. Working prog, yeah. That's the word I was looking for.
Role playing animal system? RAS? Hmm. That reminds me of a game. Razzle Dazzle? What is it? Super Animal Royale? That's what that reminds me of. I was actually just thinking about that, like, Super Creature Animal Royale. Alright, I will start getting things swapped over and you are released to go back to the Abbey on one condition. If it's me calling him cute, I've already done that like probably three dozen times. I've lost count. No, I was going to say give him a hug for me. Um, I'll give him virtual head path because unfortunately I'm still like a thousand miles away. Yeah, no, you're definitely strong. right there with him. In just, spirit. Just, just fly over. Yeah, give him a spiritual hug. Astral project over to him and give him a ghostly hug. I'm I I I'm accepting um I'm accepting donations to go to MFF <laughs> to give him hugs. I would like to go too. Well then my mom decided to guilt me into going to Ohio for a family visit and I'm conflicted. Ohio. I would go, but I'd have to give my roommate money, and I didn't buy a ticket this year. Yeah, I'm in no position to go anywhere right now. MFF mostly depends on if I can get a room. Fair. Um, That's the biggest thing. But, um... <laughs> But uh, back on the uh, main topic of hand, if you need any, if you have any other questions relating to this discussion with like the system, do let me know. I am my DMs are open. I'm just keeping Avi company because it is you know his very special 500 followers stream. So yeah, that's fair. Go enjoy. Um, yep. I think we've got it from here. Cool. Uh, actually, I'm assuming the entire conversation this evening has been on the name. And nothing yep. else. Coolio. Kinda, there's some, some, some meme conversation, but yeah. There's stuff that Coolio. I want to go through as well, but it can probably wait for next week. Yeah. Or no, hey, if the conversation gets there, you can always just poke me. I can drop. <laughs> Avi understands I can drop in and out. Well, I can probably go over some of them real quick. See, like, I don't know if they'll actually be real quick, but. Uh... Hey, look, Abby's not anywhere near finishing the space station, so. Fair enough. All right. Well, in that case, um, one thing that I was playing around with the idea of is removing the restriction of specialties to specific skills. Mm hmm. Um,. Because, like, a lot of the specialties will definitely be focused on one particular skill, but sometimes you may come up with one that could apply to multiple skills. It's a idea that I'm tossing around in my head, not sure about going with, so wanted thoughts on that. Like, just instead of, you know, you got this specialty for science, it'll be a... You have this specialty, it's generally tied to science, but it could possibly help you with other roles. Um, uh, one thing that I want to be careful of with that is if you have a specialty related to a sense. This is true. Um, I was kind of thinking along the lines of Things like, uh, <laughs> oh, what is this? Science for weather. I, I can't. Uh, meteorology. Yeah, that one. Meteorology. You have that specialty for some reason, and you're doing a perception check. And, I mean, I guess we could still just say, hey, your specialty in this would apply anyways, instead of making them generalized. Yeah. Uh, we could also say that when you have a specialty yeah. tied to a skill, 
that is what it is primarily, uh, you know, attached to. But if it comes up in a different circumstance, it could still apply. We could also say something like that. Hmm. Yeah, let's say just put make that a DM note that uh, specialties can apply to other skills at ST discretion. As a broader question, because I know this is actually kind of something that we kind of discussed last time we were doing a lot of uh, the discussion on the system. Um, is there any particular, I guess, like justification for putting the specialties under the different skill sets as opposed to just having one giant generic box called specialties that could then be applied to each of the skills? Like, as needed? Well, the advantage of tying them to skills is making sure that they are more focused on what they apply to uh, versus, like, Taldarius brought up, the, uh, you know, you get a specialty for sight. And suddenly almost everything you're rolling is getting a bonus because instead of just your perception because hey you've got that generalized specialty for sight so yeah. and you're look you're looking at basically everything oh i'm trying <laughs> I, i'm trying to i'm trying to sense motive of this person by looking at their body language that means i get my sight bonus like that yeah. that kind of stuff starts applying all over the place yeah i didn't so think i want to be myself i want to be careful about that sort of stuff and one of the reasons that I, I wanted to play a character that had one of those is so I could, like, play it out and, like, make sure we're trying to keep an eye on that kind of shit. Um, now, would that be a better question or a limitation that the storyteller places on the game? Because the way that I see it, you know, your meteorology example was a very good one because, sure, meteorology would traditionally go under science, um, but we could um, also apply meteorology to perception. We could uh, apply that to lore, investigation, negotiation. Um, we've covered, I, I, I've covered the three different, you know, types of skill sets you've described here, um, or even insight um, to a certain degree. Um, but I can see, like, yes. perception, negotiation, and lore, um, or investigation, could all be informed by having a specialty in meteorology. Um, yeah. It's not purely tied to science. I'm liking... Uh, is... oh. I'm liking Era's suggestion of just putting in a note saying that the storyteller, while it's, it's generally tied to one skill, sometimes the storyteller can allow it to be used with other skills. I'm liking that suggestion. Yeah, which is basically what I said for mine, but probably way better worded. It, it just makes sense this way. That way, whenever an S tier, what have you, is in a situation where they see it would be an applicable thing to the example given, uh, what was it, sense motive. Sensing motive, somebody and trying to discern their lying, if it's been raining for the last three days and their clothes are completely dry and they were lying about being outside, a meteorologist might pick up on something minute like that would be an applicable source, but that should be an ST discretion and probably something he wouldn't even notice or necessarily tell the player when it's happening until after the roll yeah. is made. The kind of the question I would ask on that front as well is how, how many specialties do you envision a average game uh, or in an average game one character acquiring. I um, that's a bit hard because it's up to the player kind of if they want to focus on the skills themselves or acquiring specialties. I want to give to kind yeah. of answer that or in a way it, I want to give the example of our Sunday Mage game. Like my character has been I have been building him to grab as many of the different uh, magical spheres as I can, which has led to me having kind of garbage other stats otherwise, 
but it's also given me a huge amount of uh, versatility in what kinds of magic I can wield. Uh, so you're going to have players that are like, eh, I'm good with my basic um, abilities. I'm good with my skills where they are. I'm just going to dump everything into a bunch of specialties. And then you'll have the players that go for, they've got garbage stats, but they've got a whole bunch of uh, moves, uh, abilities. Uh, then you've got the players that have a bunch of skills, and then you got those that go all around. So we can't really answer that because it is meant to be up to the player what they want to do. Mm. But on average, if I had to put in a number and it's mostly just being pulled out of my ass, I'd probably say like five specialties per character. Um, kind of just depends on the role play mostly. And just to kind of follow up since you mentioned something, are these specialties intended to be purchased or are they essentially acquired through, you know, acts of storytelling and role playing? They are intended to be purchased. However, we did we are putting in a note that the storyteller is very much welcome to increase or decrease the cost as appropriate to the role play. So it's got a base price that is just nothing to it. No, no special modifiers. But on the other hand, like in the case of Squirrel in Lost in Chaos, he got with a trainer uh, for learning how to be a blacksmith, for learning how to smith. Uh, he rolled very well on the rolls for learning. And so Anja rewarded me with a discounted cost to purchase this specialty. But there was still a cost. Yeah. Yeah. Uh and just to like give examples for the rest of it, uh, like the other like two possibilities, um, Vane ended up, uh, which is my character in that same game, ended up picking up a foraging specialty after reading a book in the library about it for base price. And uh, an example that could be used, uh, and the reason that he got base price is because he had something that could introduce him to the concept, but he didn't exactly have like examples or a teacher or anything. Meanwhile, if I wanted to pick that up and uh, he had never been in, like really introduced to the concept like properly, uh, it would probably be a bit more expensive for him to get that. Hello. Mm -hmm. So and you have to at least be introduced to the concept in order to get it like properly, mm. unless you want to pay an upcharge. Gotcha. And you um... can't go like randomly go hey i'm gonna spend 15 xp and get a nuclear science specialty like out of the blue you can't do that kind of thing yeah damn it dart dart secret's been revealed <laughs> <laughs> underneath all that fluff is actually a nuclear reactor sorry to cut in here i am going to hop out of voice though guys i'm heading to bed all right sleep uh well Look forward to that. Flowers as Jace goes to bed. Hey, now get out of my house. <laughs> out, out. Don't make me get the broom. <laughs> our house in the middle of our street. Our, our house. house. Flowers, from the, flowers from the nearby bushes. Meanwhile, <laughs> Asher uh, hiding under the blankets with a flashlight. Uh, and still staying on the call and stuff, and just being very quiet. The truth is, is he's trying to be quiet, but he's incapable of such things. Yeah. He'll giggle all Jace, night. Jace 100% knows that he's staying up. Jace doesn't sleep anyways, it's okay. But well, Jace's player is absolutely to going to bed now. Oh. <laughs> uh, right. Catch you later. Good night. Sleep well. All right, so uh, general consensus seems keep them tied to skills. Yeah, I mean it's it's definitely a question that I'm like I'm I am intentionally trying to you know pick at because it is a 
it is an additional layer onto what's already been established in terms of having the attributes, expertise, and skills. Um, and I just want to make sure that, like, the reasoning is sound. Um, I like, and I have a kind of a follow-up question in terms of, do you intend to generate a list of, like, essentially predetermined skills? Like, for example, you mean science. Specialties? Sorry, specialties. Thank you. Um, like, you know, science, you'd have like biology, meteorology, physics, chemistry. Um, like, essentially, each skill has like five specialties associated with it for storyteller and potential player reference. Um, I already have a list of three specialties. Uh, three example specialties for each uh, skill. Um, and it is specified that these are only examples. Uh, they are, but you can come up with whatever you want for your specialties, provided the storyteller approves. It's not an exhaustive list, to say the least. Yeah. Yeah. Like, for example, Squirrel hmm. has an ADHD specialty for his evasion. He, he's got a uh, bonus to his what? evasion just because he is constantly moving, constantly kind of jittering and such. Uh, he's... If ADHD his... gives me a bonus to evasion, then why do I keep catching these feelings? <laughs> no one can dodge the feels. Yeah, that's just a skill issue, Rygon. Oh. Yeah, no, you need to level up that evasion first. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> but yeah, uh, I give a few example specialties for each, but in general, I won't be uh, really... Uh, giving much in the way of examples. <laughs> like, like, I'm not going to give an exhaustive list. I'm just giving some examples to get the brain juices flowing, as it were. Mm. Yeah. So, for example, I think a good example of this is that, like, for the medicine skill, we have special example specialties for wounds, illnesses, and poisons. That covers a lot of what medicine is, but, you know, it's not exactly an exhaustive list. <laughs> and uh also another another thing to bring up is that like if you um purposefully like limit the scope of the specialty you could also probably get a discount on it uh yeah so if you're like for example if you pick up cooking and then you want to go with gourmet chef It'll probably be a discounted cost for the gourmet chef because that is a much more specific specialty. Yep. Does it help you a lick if you're camping, if you're like cooking over a campfire? Uh huh. I will cook gourmet food over a campfire. <laughs> Congratulations. It ain't, that ain't how it works. What the fudge? You can make $180,000 a year just by pooping? Damn. Carry on. You know, Rygon, I am just scared for your FBI agent that is just watching what you're looking up. I'm looking up memes. This this memes about how you can make a lot of money by pooping. They they want stool samples. Moving on. <sighs> so yeah, and uh, any other thoughts on that, uh, Seda or Todd Arias or others? Um, for me, my my opinion, I feel like I kind of want to actually like experience when you know eventually we move over to the system and play test it myself. Um, because part of me feels like the. <laughs> 
considering how potentially open-ended um, specialties could be and how effectively limited they might also be in terms of their acquisition, I almost kind of feel like the more elegant solution long-term would be to just not tie the skill or tie the specialties to skills and just have a generic specialties box and it'd be up to the player and the storyteller in that particular instance to decide hey actually yes your specialty in meteorology would be applicable to this perception check um, as opposed to okay I have a specialty in uh, being cute I'm going to apply to every single role or the site example where it's like okay just because you have a specialty in sight does not mean you get an extra bonus to your perception check because of this. Like, perception is a lot more than just seeing. Uh, and maybe the particular instance, what's important is not being seen. Um, but that's something that I feel like would be... My, my opinion would be more informed by actually playtesting that out. Because I feel like that idea of the system could be just simplified down to that front end just put more pl power into the player and the storyteller all right um kerr what are your thoughts on it kerr sorry i was thinking getting my thoughts in order Like, what specifically do you want me to focus on here? Well, what we're talking about right now is uh, debating between having the... We're, we're debating between having skills tied... Or specialties oh, yeah. tied to skills or just have a general list of specialties. Mm -hmm. So... When it comes to like specialties, usually they're just, there's not usually like a full on list of them. It's more just. Well, we're not asking about having a list of specialties. We're asking mm -hmm. about do we want to keep skills tied or specialties tied to individual skills? Or do we want to let players be like, okay, I pick up a specialty in sight. And they can apply that to whatever skills uh, the storyteller allows them to. Good night, Merle. Yeah. Bye-bye, Merle. Bye-bye. Because it's a bit of a double-edged sword here. Because on one hand, it's nice that, like, let's say you have in your... Uh, melee skill you have a specialty for blades and like you could apply that on like a perception check on the blade that someone else is holding like that'd make perfect sense but there's also the problem that there's uh specialties that are very just broadly good yeah and i feel like, like for example if you did perception sight like you know you could you could apply that on so many skill checks I actually, I kind of want so to that's put a, the the double edged sword word. Go ahead, sorry. I, I actually kind of want to put a pin in that thought for me because I'm actually trying to. I want to actually understand what your specialty of sight is because on paper, on like on first glance, I'm thinking this is a stupidly broad specialty. Who the heck allowed that? Yeah, the storyteller um, has to be the one who tells you what can and cannot be. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right now we have it so that way it's mostly, pretty much mostly limited to whatever skill it's attached to. So for example, I have a sight perception, which means that if something is a visual perception check, uh, I get one more dice on it and then that's that. Um, hmm. And then there's, for example, in the same game, there's someone that has a smell perception specialty. So if it's something to do with smells, they get a plus one dice on perception checks it's limited to perception checks and then there's also some narrative like i, I don't want to like say it's just that because there's also small narrative benefits mm. but and, that's the way it works mechanically uh -uh. and like 
either way, whether they are tied to one specific specialty or one specific skill or not, like we're going to be putting in the note that, hey, if the storyteller allows it, you can apply your specialty here to uh, any other role. It just has to be approved by the storyteller. So I, I guess it's more a matter of do we want to let the storyteller have more control or do we want to give the players more room for arguing in favor of brokenness? Storyteller. Because I do feel like if we make it where they're not tied to specialties, we're going to have or the specialties are not tied to skills. We're going to have a lot of players that are like, well, I want to use my sight specialty on this. And it's not tied to perception. So therefore, they have a lot more ground to argue for that versus where if it were tied to perception, the storyteller could be like, the storyteller could allow it to be used for something else as a special exception instead of the norm. Yeah. It, it's sort of a thing where it's like, you know, because right now it's tied to a specific skill, it makes it so that way something that would otherwise be absolutely like the best choice in the game bar none stays in its lane. You know? Yeah, I, I definitely feel like my viewpoint in this is probably outside the norm because I'm actually also realizing, wait, all of you guys have run games at some points. Like, hmm. <laughs> I think I should trust my viewpoint a little less, but, um, well, that is why I appreciate having you around with all of this is because you have enough experience with tabletop to have a general idea of what we're talking about while giving that the best way I can put it is new player perspective. Yeah, and I, and I, I will actually also note on that front when I've been I've been taking like some of our conversations about the system and I have, you know, taken it to other servers to kind of talk about like the oh, yeah, we've been working on this. Um, at times I have confused people and the comment I got was <laughs> that is overly complicated. Um, so a part of my informed kind of viewpoint on here is also trying to make sure that the system you know finds that right balance of mechanics and simplicity um just because yeah we could have a system that like you know we could totally do a system that like um gives the storyteller the ability to calculate how much oxygen and nitrogen is in the air um down to like the decimal place it might be a bit too complicated to just say, hey, the air is bad. Uh, weird example, I'm sorry. Um, so um, I am part of my kind of questioning and reasoning is trying to, you know, make sure that, you know, the system, you know, isn't sacrificing its mechanics, but also is approaching things from a simpler perspective. My viewpoint so on this one, or sorry, uh, just on that note real quick, I want to say my overall goal as far as complexity goes is somewhere between D&D 5th Edition and Pathfinder. D&D uh, 5th Edition, I've had a lot of people say, say it is very simplistic. It is a little too boiled down. It's got some complexity to it, but not much. Whereas Pathfinder, on the other hand, has way too much complexity. Um, and so I want to find the best middle ground that I can, giving people options on what they can do with their character, which mm. is part of why I want those specialties is they give a lot of depth and flavor to the character. Um, yeah, it's a little complex on how they work. Uh, I don't personally think so, but at the same time, that's just 
I, I've been doing tabletop for a long time, so a lot of this isn't going to seem very complex to me. But uh, yeah. it, it's still something that I know that it, it's a system that can absolutely be ignored. However, for those players that want to use it, it is a godsend. I have been very much enjoying it with Squirrel. Whereas with Hunter, it's just taken a back seat. Mm. And both ver both uh, styles on that are per perfectly valid. Yeah. I will say that, like, I've done the math on this because, I, I mean, I did the math. Uh, literally not worth it to grab a specialty early. Uh, we're doing it anyways. I, I will fully admit that. Mm. Mathematically, it doesn't make sense to pick up a specialty until you have three dots in that skill. Because uh, what's the bo what's the bonus for a specialty? I'm assuming it's effectively like... It's one dice. Unless you upgrade the specialty, in which case you get more dice, but that costs even more XP. Mm. Oh. That news article makes me sad. Oh. They gave Alzheimer's to I... young animals. Oh. Yeah. I, that is very sad. So... But... There's so ways I'm... to ma so there's specialties and then mastered specialties. You can master a specialty for extra bonus, but it's it's really expensive. Mm. <clears throat> <laughs> but yeah, so mathematically, you're not. It doesn't make sense to pick them up early, but mechanically. Uh, I will say that it, it's, um, like, for example, I literally had a character pick up a specialty for the sole purpose of that character was very worried that another character was going to eat something hellaciously poisonous and would die. Hmm. So they wanted to pick up the specialty in order to hopefully avoid that happening. So I will say that it does account, it does allow for a lot of emergent roleplay. Of course, it doesn't really have too much to do with the whole, like, attaching it to a skill specifically or not. I, I'm just more talking about specialties in general. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm, I'm kind of like just pausing and gathering my thoughts because I'm I definitely feel some complicated thoughts on this one. And I'm trying to, like, gather a gather kind of my concerns and how I would adjust them. Um, because right. I'll be I'll be honest, I felt a spike of anxiety when you just just tossed out mastered specialties, and I'm like, are you heckin' kidding me? Um, that, that's so, like the ultimate that, late game sort of mechanic. That that yeah, that was something that I was uh, kind of like. Generally, you don't want to throw out all of that stuff at a newer player. There, there he is. Because that just... I am me. I can't help it. I oh, know, no, no, no. but well, no. I the perspective I look from there is, you know, you're going to have like a really good storyteller that is going to give like a new player making a level one character all the info they exactly need at that time. So like, you know, something like a specialty might not even come up in character creation. Um, you get one um, for free. Yeah, you do you get, get a specialty at character creation. Okay, good. You actually incorporated something I was thinking about anyway. Um, and wait, we talked about this the last time we talked to you about specialties. Yeah. Yes, but we we're also talking about expertise and merits and... Um, so when... Yeah. It when it comes to specialties, I do specify. I did specify in the character creation section that it's meant to represent the character's background, mm. give yeah. them a little bit of flavor to 
who they were before they started adventuring, before the campaign started. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like you know, back at my main like little point there, like a experienced storyteller and someone who's familiar with the game system, you know, would recognize. Okay, hey, something like mastered mastered specialties is not going to be relevant until your character is like the equivalent of, let's say, level 10 or something. You know, just I, I know you were doing things a little bit differently um, and, you know, won't cover that until, you know, later on. Um, though I also do worry about, you know, maybe a, you know, a fresh storyteller who just learned the system, who's going to nerd out about every single detail. It's like, oh, yeah, you have specialties and then you can actually upgrade the specialties to get like master specialties, get even more of a bonus. And then you just have the the, the fresh player there just being like what are you talking about so um, yeah. the thing there is I do want to emphasize away from the because I have seen you make these kinds of arguments about what about this storyteller doing this what about that storyteller doing that mm -hmm. we can't control that oh absolutely not and as such it's something that we just the most that we can do is put in the rules and whatever the storytellers decide to do with that, they're going to do it regardless of what the rules say. Um, yeah. You know, like the temporary evolutions. Kerr's already been putting those into the into his game without them even e existing in the rules, any rules on it. <laughs> yeah, we'll make them work. <laughs> <laughs> it's already well, we being started making rules specifically because of that but well we made the rule for digimon primarily but it also applies to kerr putting in temporary evolutions um yeah these are like there are going to be storytellers that are just gonna be like you know i'm gonna just do this because i want to and you're going to have those storytellers that are just going to bombard poor new players with a bunch of stuff. Um, and, like, we cannot consider that in developing the system because otherwise we're going to wind up with 5th edition. Where it's just so simplistic, so just because of those potential storytellers that take things and go weird routes or over too uh, overly explained or things like that mm. yeah and also one thing i do want to point out is that like i effectively did just bring up that hey by the way these things exist and then brush past it because it didn't really apply yet so i i did kind of already do the thing that you wanted to happen with that of you know hey new player by the way just so you know this thing exists doesn't matter right now but just so you know, it exists. Yeah. I, I did just want to point that out because you did specifically mention that that's what you wanted to happen. And that's that that is what happened. There. Yeah. No, and I appreciate you for that. Um, for the overall question at hand, though. Um, Like, part of me feels, like, on the fence about the idea of specialties actually being acquired for experience points. When I feel like something of that magnitude that, you know, you were tying to the character's backstory would be much... Feels much more earned when done through roleplay or a special circumstance. Um, now, but that's... I, I I I I do want to let you finish, but I do just want to say we already have red XP and blue XP. We're not adding in green XP. <laughs> Wait, there's two different XPs. Because the he's merits. referring to the merits and XP. I thought we got rid of yeah. that. No, we merged all of it so that way it's not different flavored red XP for all the different expertises. Instead, now it's just a ten step per dot you want. So now, like, if you want to go to dot two, you need to have 20 merits. Because it was too complicated otherwise. So we still have red XP and blue XP. We're not adding green XP. 
But we did we did concatenate all the different uh all the different flavors of red. Um Okay. Trying to keep things more simple here. <laughs> um is simplicity. I will say that already in the rules, like in the document there, I do specify that specialties should be earned through roleplay, or at least they're the opportunity for them. Uh, storytellers are welcome to just give out those specialties for free. However, I do recommend, like we're still going to recommend that they still have that small cost. But... Like, they can reduce it to 5 XP, and it's like, okay, you learned how to do this in this session. You got your 5 XP from this session. There you go. Here's your specialty. Yeah. Um, but actually, back at the specialties, because the, par uh, cause the merits are going to make my head hurt again. Um... <laughs> My, like, this is a viewpoint I am perfectly open to being being told I'm incorrect on, because obviously you, you beans have run games, but at least in my mind, I like the idea of the specialties not being tied to a skill, because at least in that sense, it opens up a particular avenue of player agency where, yes, you do have the subset rule there that says, yeah, the storyteller could apply that. I'm kind of reasoning that it might be better to let the, you know, let the reins go and have that be more of a table to table kind of um ruling um as opposed to essentially as opposed to you telling to the potential storyteller yeah you could let the reins go if you a little bit you kind of tell the storyteller yeah you can pull the reins in if you want um because the arguments kind of the i guess like the player agency is a little bit similar but i guess just the slight approach where if you tie, like, say, meteorology to science, it might limit the potential player creativity, and they might only just do that for science unless you have the kind of player that being like, actually, could I use it for this? Could I use it for that? But on the flip side, if you just say, hey, you have this specialty, you can apply it where you see fit, the players might be more open to seeing, yeah, I'm going to use this for my perception check or, you know, my um, investigation check. And it'd be on the agency of the storyteller. Be like, actually, hey, I don't think you can quite use that specialty for this one. Um, so just give me the flat, you know, roll for that minus the specialty. So I'm just thinking that minor flip of approach might open up a lot more potential creativity from players for how they use the specialty system. An argument on the flip side is having it like we could reword it to this being the primary skill for this uh for the specialty not necessarily it is you know tied to the skill but that's the primary one i think that might help out a bit um yeah get a little bit more of that player agency in there you know, it's like, yes, this is the primary one, but it can also, you know, that yeah, that implies when, that there's other things you can use it with. Yeah, when it comes to specialties, usually, um, like, I'm just going to use an example from World of Darkness. Uh, for melee, using, you have a specialty in swords, or perhaps you have a specialty in a specific sword that you always use. Um that specialty will apply whenever you use your sword because you have trained with it. You know it better than basically anyone else. And it does usually 99.9% .9 of the time you're going to be using it for hitting things really, really hard. 
However, there are going to be situations possibly where you could argue that you're going to use your sword as a tool to do something else other than hitting something really hard. And that's yeah. where you can make the argument, hey, I want to use my sword specialty because I'm using it as my tool, like say to pry open a door, for instance. I have a magical sword that won't be damaged by that. Uh, in that case, yeah. uh, or, then you could apply the specialty. Or uh, like the example that I used, like you could use it to like a roll perception on what the opponent is using or like an appraise check on a sword. Because like, oh, hey, yeah, you know, you know your swords. Well, but, what I wanted you know. to get here is the specialty can be a matter of it is primarily used for with this skill. But that primary thing implies that it doesn't always have to be. And on that front you have the uh it makes sure that it keeps it a bit more grounded so the players aren't just being like yeah i've got a specialty in sight if it's not tied to anything like perception it opens the floodgates for a little too much abuse oh absolutely and i kind of feel like in the same vein if, you know, specialties aren't going to be, you know, dictated 100% by the rulebook. Um, like, I, like, I personally would not have given a specialty to sight. Um, especially if, like, the idea behind specialties is that you could potentially apply them to, you know, other skills. Um, not just perception, because in my mind, that is... Um, a v extremely like I, I probably would not allow sight on anything else outside of maybe investigation, um, um, or like evasion, but like it's a bit too broad of yeah. a specialty in my books for something that, like, if I was running yeah. a game, I would not have allowed. Yeah, and one of the reasons that I wanted to like point it out and be very, very, very careful about it is for the specific reason that like you know it is literally one of the examples for perception specialties that we're recommending things like um your senses alertness blind sense so on that front so, like i am all for having like people can train their senses or not necessarily it's more complicated like you can't just oh i have better vision it's more like when you when you have the perception eyesight or perception sight specialty it is more referencing like kind of training your capability to pick out details with your vision uh, it's training, like, if you've got a specialty for hearing, uh, you can train yourself to kind of put out, or drown out, uh, background noise to kind of narrow in on what you want to listen to. Um, those are absolutely things can, people can do. Um, so that's kind of the idea behind spe the specialties for that. Um... But yeah, I, I'm thinking having them tied to a primary skill is probably the best bet. And then putting in that note that the storyteller can't allow them to be used elsewhere. Yeah. It gives more player agency by say calling it that calling it primary skill instead of just this is the skill it's tied to. Um, because it gives that grounding of, okay, this is about your actual vision rather than just, you know, open-ended on, okay, this can apply to anything involving sight, period. Hello? Yeah, no, I, I, okay. I think, like, at the very least, that would be a very important just note to add for players is that, like, hey, be creative. 
um, you know, like, a specialty in, me like, meteorology, you know, is applicable in a lot of situations. You know, work with your storyteller to be like, hey, for this particular instance, could I use this? Obviously be reasonable, but be creative. Yeah, that's definitely something that we have been very particular about the, with the system, is being creative. Yeah. But I think we've got I that I am slightly settled. sad we got rid of creative defenses. What do you mean? Oh, because when we were talking about, like, uh, using things creatively, the literal example I gave was, like, uh, one of the things that I did that I had the most fun with was having a character that, uh, instead of, like, defended with his weapon, would stare down the people daring to come up to him and roll Intimidate. But it, it does not work with the with the system that we have now, so I'm slightly sad about it, but I, I'm perfectly understanding yeah, that I mean, was the uh, that was the exact that was the example I gave about it, and you went, "Oh, that's really fun." You can still do that. You can still roll well, to intimidate really somebody and keep them from even coming up to attack you. No, 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 no. I mean, like instead of doing like a defensive action, like trying to dodge it. That was the thing that he did. Like he didn't try to dodge or block it. He just stared you the fuck down, like, going, you dare try this. But, again, like, I fully understand the whole, you know. That would be in, that would be in place of an attack, not defense. I am still but not yeah, following it, it, what it you're talking really about. <laughs> Dude, okay, so imagine instead of using evasion you use Intimidate. Okay. Literally in place of your defense. That was the example that I gave originally. He didn't dodge. He didn't block. So he, like, he didn't roll Evasion. He didn't roll to Brace. He didn't do any of that. He rolled Intimidate. To use... He, 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 did, a, he, did, a, he did a Presence check instead. To use we can our, put in a note for that. Our skills. I'm all for that. Again, I'm... It, Okay, I'm just saying it doesn't exactly work as well, considering that we have it be... It's not a role anymore, it's a flat characteristic thing. Well, yes, but because you now, can still use... So it doesn't... As far I'm as I'm concerned, if you well. want to... As far as I'm concerned, if you want to uh, use... Uh, like you know, presence instead of evasion for what they have to roll against for accuracy, I'm all for it. But too many rolls was definitely uh, slowing down the game a lot. Yeah. Anyways. Well, I mean, unless you knew exactly what you were doing the moment it was called for. It was perfectly fast then if you didn't have to stop or think about anything. Which yeah, is but totally most realistic players, for a uh, tabletop game, yeah. right, guys? Yeah. It's totally realistic to expect them to know exactly what to roll without being prompted. Moving on. <laughs> uh, another <laughs> thing I wanted to go over: initiative chance dice. Uh, basically, for initiative right now, it is. You roll a dice for how many uh, dots and in initiative you have, and then you add up the actual total that is on the die. It's not based on, you know, it's not seven and above for successes. It's just you rolled a five and a seven. Great. You've got a, a 12 for initiative. Yeah. Um, uh, I think the best solution we have for that is just have it start at one and then add dice for every skill, every rank and initiative you have. I, that's what I'm thinking, but I wanted to run that by, you know, those gathered here for their thoughts. So what you want to do is you want to have initiative just be, okay, I have, I'm actually just pulling up the, um. If you want to, you can pull up the document. I, I literally just pulled up the document. Because we're, we're... 
Uh, if you want to know where it's at, it's under combat. For obvious reasons. It's the first thing at combat. Rygon mm -hmm. cute. Rygon is cute. Alright, I'm going to bow out for right now. I have to go get some dindins. Alright, see ya. Thank you for coming. Right. No problem. Bye bye. Bye bye. Well, my delay made it so he didn't hear me. Sag. Okay, so what you're suggesting is that, you know, hey, you know, you're rolling a d10 based off of your initiative. Um, your dots initiative, which I see there is a section underneath here for and your active stat changes on the spreadsheet. I see like initiative on there at the bottom left. Is um that the dot that is being referred to? No, initiative is a skill. Um, okay, no, I so I see that now. Sorry, my apologies. Yeah, the natural skill. So you basically are gonna you're gonna be rolling between one and five dice to get your initiative score. Yes. Correct. Unless you have a special, but you would add one more. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are saying uh, make it more. Uh, basically, we're saying add one. Add one, yeah. So, so that way, if you, would you start have at one, for that way, if you have zero, you would still roll a dice by default rules. Yeah. Because that is one problem that we have definitely uh, run into uh, last night, where. People with zero dots or with no dots and in initiative were literally just starting with an initiative of zero. And it means you still have to like do extra rolls to figure out who's gonna be doing stuff anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Cause then we have to have all these people with no dots and in initiative uh roll to see who goes in which order with that. Yeah. Not so great. it didn't it didn't speed things up at all to have additional complications. So instead we're saying, hey, what if it just starts at one and then you add dots in initiative add your dots in initiative to it? So you know just, it starts at one and then it goes from one to six by base without specialties. Yeah, and would that be something you'd think you'd want to actually display on the uh character sheet where you just have the six dots there and the first one's automatically filled in? Just as kind of like an idiot proofing uh, a little bit. That would disrupt. I mean, you literally the... only have. Go ahead. That would very much disrupt the uh, design of the character sheet. Idiot proofing is all well and good, but I'm. It wouldn't work. It, it would just make things a little gross. To just have one skill also, in the list with six dots instead of five. Also, I do just want to point this out. Um, all that that would change is you having to add one in your head to what your what it says your initiative is already on your on your character sheet. Mm. It, it saves people from having to add a plus one. Also, which I another point here. Initiative being a skill is done on purpose because the storyteller could call for that outside of the combat uh, order initiative roles. Um, and so giving them that free dot, it, like we're talking about this is just for combat order where they would get that plus one. Yeah, this would be rolling for initiative, not a any initiative roll. I, I want to point that out. Hmm. Because, like, I know we've had it be, for example, that we've rolled an initiative roll in order to see just, hey, you know, I'm trying to get to this item before this other person. 
We've also rolled athletics for that, but you know, I'm just giving that like as an example of a non-combat related use that we've had for it. So I just want to point out that, like, you know, no, this I, is no, I, not... I, I think I think that's yeah. fair. Yeah. All right. So we'll be adding initiative chance dice for combat order. All right. Uh, two more things on the list here. Um, this was actually from a suggestion from Rygon that I kind of like the idea of, but wanted to run it by people. Um a boost system uh basically every session that you sit down to play you get some bonus dice uh that you can apply to any uh roll it kind of sounds fun to have that extra boost every now and then with no penalties to it or anything just a hey you're sitting down to play congrats here's two dice that you can add to uh, a roll at some point this session all right, is that two dice uh, that you have to apply to one, or is it two individual dice? Two individual. Okay. And that would only be for the current session, right? I'm thinking we may tie it to Soul, primarily because Soul kind of has very few uses as is. So it would give a little boost to the usefulness of the soul attribute. Because right now, soul oh, really okay. so only applies for... Right, it's ahead. the offense and defense for... Uh, it's the offense and defense for stat changes and yeah. statuses and the like. But uh, so that way, it means that like you'd get dice, hey there, bonus Asha, dice per session equal to your soul. One bit Shadox thinks you're cute. Well, thank you very much there, uh, Nano. I, I really appreciate that. <laughs> Sorry, I had a card played. Uh, repeat what you were saying. So, uh, it makes it so that way you gain dice equal to your soul each session, not two. I was thinking soul divided by two, but rawr, yes. Rawr, rawr. Okay. Like rounding up or rounding down? The same as everything else in the system. If I it's point, need to ask. I, I'm pointing that out because I have answered that. Um, if it's 0.5, then it'll be rounded up. Okay, because I, I need to ask for every single thing because inevitably in basically every single uh, system that I play... You round up or down almost every single time, but not every time. So I, I want to ask to make sure we're staying consistent. Um, I have made it... Because I swear to God. I have put in under the basics section, rounding rules. When you need to determine a result or other number after needing to divide it, uh, it's still listed as row, but... Rao uses the standard math rules on this. If the result is 0.5 or higher, then you round up. If the result is below 0.5, then you roll down, round down. That will apply to everything. There will be no exceptions to this. Slug Muffin, thank you very much for that follow. Welcome. Um... But anyways, outside of rounding rules, what do you two think of the boost system there? Uh, I definitely think that it's a... Uh, it, it definitely gives some extra utility. Yeah, I feel like... Um, it it's, not, it's nice and simple. Um, yeah. And something that I, I actually really enjoyed from the... Dark Heresy 2nd Edition, which was actually my first tabletop system. Um, 
was the idea that you had fate points as a character. Where on a per session basis, those are just rerolls for you. Um, I know kind of deviating a little bit from the concept for the boost, but having that kind of essentially little extra that you could apply to a situation you really wanted to. Um, I know I, I like it. And the fact that, like, you know, basically it was on a per session basis, not like a per encounter basis, encourage you to use it. Um, so yeah. maybe you were trying to do something like really epic and, you know, you, know, you don't want to mess this up or, hey, you want to just do something really silly for like style points. And as opposed to you falling on your f face, you actually do nail the landing because you use your bonus or your reroll. It was nice. Um, and I kind of like the idea of it being a bonus as opposed to a reroll because at least like you could use that bonus to kind of push you over the edge as opposed to like risking a reroll and it's actually like even worse yeah we do have rerolls still uh with the willpower but that is not per session that is uh for long rests and such so this boost system is yeah. just per session and just mm. gives you that little boost potentially yeah could also yeah. roll a one and bite you in the ass, but... Yeah, so it could actually turn out badly for you to do it, but, you know. Mathematically, it's always good. In practice, uh, dice gods. Yeah, it's kind of where I would probably ask, like... Okay. Um, I know, like, we've had previous discussions on, like, obviously the re-roll with roll power, the, like overcharge idea with like exhaustion and now a boost that could What's be just so exhaustion which so yeah no it, it not, not like did, wait does boost give exhaust, uh, exhaustion no boost will no, not this is a new thing that we're discussing yeah the boost is kind of just a free you're here at the table you get a bonus exactly yeah. which I, I i like i like the principle of um, and this is not me arguing against it. I'm just also thinking in the back of my mind, like, holy heck, we're going to have, like, willpower for exhaustion. Uh, or sorry, basically, combination of willpower, overcharge, and boost. Like, holy heck, if I want to do a Kamehameha, like, I can, um, I can blast a hole into the other campaign. Screw the fourth, di fourth wall. We we're breaking the fifth and sixth wall now. <laughs> Just, potentially just, just cute just cute image of like dart doing a pellet shot so powerful that you just see like asher just peer their head through just like you're not even in the same ip <laughs> i mean to be fair that is welcome in this system actually oh my god i'm just imagining just like there's like two layers of holes now you just have like one holes like the wednesday campaign they're just being like what the heck do you do? And then you just have, like, the other hole that's past that. Just go through. You just have the Digibody campaign. Just like, what did, what happened? We had that's a supposed to be us here. pulling this off. <laughs> God, that's going to be a goal. Fire, like, uh, fire an attack so hard, you just punch a hole in reality. Not enough to break it, just punch a hole. <laughs> Look, all, all I'm, all I'm going to say is, again, I immediately think Shane would vibe and Vane would lose his head. <laughs> Vane's head would and, literally and you know explode. He, he, he... <laughs> <laughs> Look, all, all I'm saying is, like, you know, after the latest session, Vane went straight from, uh, from I will kill any of you. I will learn how to strangle you with, with wings if you do something dumb or irresponsible. And then at the end of the session, he's like, I, I am at peace with the universe. Immediate whole in reality that causes even more chaos. All right. So one quick question on the boost system, something that just uh, popped in my head. Do we want to allow them to re-roll a one instead of adding an extra die? I actually like both. Well, they can do both, sorry, is what I meant. But, like, they can... 
they want to use the their boost oh, either or. dice. Yeah, they, it can be used to re-roll a one or add an extra die. A little bit more complicated to the mechanics of it, but yeah, that's fine. It's a complication I actually think opens up a lot of opportunity, which I like. Like, yeah, it's I, like I, I, in I, uh, it's like in the with the fortune system, how you could either re-roll the whole roll or you could add plus one to your success level. Yeah. And I think that's actually probably something just to, from like a philosophy standpoint, I definitely should like also clarify is that like, while I do like simplifying things down, I also do like it when just you have that, okay, this little extra rule here opens up so many possibilities. Like, again, that balance between like simplicity, but also like depth. Duke. Um, yeah. And I think this Hi, is, it's like, it's just, it's just one extra rule on what you can use the dice for, but it just, changes you know opens up more possibilities how you can do it you can be like okay hey i really want to do this so i'm going to give myself the bonus or actually i don't want to fail this i'm just going to re-roll that one um sure it does kind of make the real power roll a little bit redundant unless like there's some differentiation there but i like it oh no the uh, the willpower rule lets you re-roll everything uh this yeah, is just rolling only let you re-roll a, a result of a one from yeah. what I'm hearing. Yeah. Okay. So if you roll a two, shit out of luck. If you roll a three, shit out of luck. If you roll a four, five, whatever, shit out of luck. So if you get a, because like this happened uh, in like one of the more uh, literally last session, some guy rolled all like fours and fives on like a five dice roll. The uh, willpower would help with that. Uh, the boost die would do nothing there. Yeah. Because you can't re-roll any of those dice because it's not a result of a one. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. So it's they each have their own use. Um all right, so I think we're settled on that being added. Uh the last thing on this list traits. I want to take the Pokemon abilities and convert them into traits instead, similar to what you have with Pathfinder. Uh, the suggestion that uh, I believe it was Tiberian uh, gave is that we could have it because at character creation i'm thinking you're going to get two traits um what those traits will be are something that i'm going to work on soon um especially with having uh Taldarius working on the move costs that'll mean that i can work on the traits instead because i know a lot of people have been asking about their abilities and how those work but basically I'm thinking with character creation, you get two traits and a drawback. Um, drawbacks, they have a lot of story potential to them. They give a lot of, uh, they give a lot of depth to a character where they're not just this perfect being. They have some form of character flaw or Something along those lines. I kind of like the idea. Um, alternatively, I'm thinking of having it be where they get one trait, but no drawback. Or they go with two traits and a drawback. Alright. So, what are thoughts on that? And for the, again, these traits are going to be similar to the Pokemon abilities. There'll probably be a little balancing adjustment to them. Because, like, some of those abilities are a little overpowered. <laughs> yeah. Um, cough, uh, super luck cough. Yeah. Apparently the Absol has it, by the way. Oh, the, the NPC the one? one that's teaching us. Uh, yeah, the NPC that's teaching us. Apparently, he also has super luck. So, you know, that'll be fun. The 
It's a good thing that I'm role-playing it that, like, Vayne only can use super luck if he's not stressed the fuck out. <laughs> not that it seems to matter, considering <laughs> he rolled seven damage. So, uh... What are you th what are your thoughts on those, Seda? On the idea that character creation kind of get like two positive traits and a negative trait, essentially. Yes. Um. Or one negative trait, or one positive trait with no negative trait. You get to choose one of the two options, one of those two starting options. Yeah. I kind of personally lean like. Regardless of the starting option, would negative traits still be a thing? An earnest disciple. Um, what do you mean by that? Also, Sippy, thank you for that follow. Um, just because um my my kind of um thought process is that like I personally don't like the idea of negative traits. Um. Just from the basis that, like, you at times can be hard-pressed to notice some of your positive traits. Um, but you always notice your negative traits. So, so if you were... Um, I do want to emphasize again that you can choose not to take a drawback, uh, a negative trait, by only getting one positive. Hmm. And these are going to be things along the lines of, like, flash fire. Um, Elaborate. Uh, the, these are going to be... Si the positive traits are going to be uh, similar to the Pokemon abilities. That's where I'm going to be starting with those, is coming up with the list of traits based on the Pokemon abilities... You know, flash fire where they're immune to fire. Um, you've got intimidate where, you know, you cut the enemy uh, attack a little bit. Um, things like that. Um, they're going to be restructured a bit for balancing sake. But that's where I'm pulling a lot of them. Hmm. Neo, what are you talking about there? Um, as far as traits, uh, the negative ones go, if you want to work with your storyteller to overcome it at some point, uh, go for it. Um, but... It's just something that your character would start with. Mm. A good example of this would be, like, you know, uh, Darts Phobia of Moth. I was actually just thinking that and be like, you know, Hydrophobia. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That would be, like, an example of it. And then, like, get, making it so that way it has some... Uh, uh Taldarius, you are like, far actually. away. Yes, I am. That's because I'm across my room. I, I'm yelling across my room to get this here. Uh, I'll be over in a second. But, uh, it would be more like taking something that is roleplay, but also giving it some actual like, mechanical effects. Along with the possibility of, like, you know, overcoming it should you, like, I don't know, like, roleplay enough to overcome it. Stuff like that. Honestly, I don't think that the drawbacks are going to have a mechanical stat to it. I think oh, they're no, mostly I, I, gonna be I, just roleplay. I, and, and on that yeah. case, I... If there's no mechanical drawback, I would actually be firmly in the camp of 
you know, have character creation be, you know, two traits and, you know, a negative kind of quirk. Because I think that having two allows your character to not be, like, so shoehorned into a specialty. Like, let's just say, yeah, I'm going to make my trait, you know... I know Weathervane doesn't do that, but I'm just going to say, like, you know, hey, Weathervane, and, you know, you get a bonus to, like, meteorology and stuff like that. You know, you don't want to tur have it tur turn you into the weather guy. Um, but having a second trait allows you to kind of diversify a little bit. Um, but then adding that extra kind of roleplay quirk of, like, you know, hydrophobia um, adds some really cool depth to your character. And... Yeah. And because it doesn't have a negative trait associated with it, it's something that is purely based in RP and can be rewarded when you do RP correctly with that. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm down with that. Like, you know, two traits of quirk. Yeah. Uh, I do just want to say that when I say mechanical effects, I, I don't mean a mechanical, like, stat to it. I mean, like, Oh hey, you know, Dart, you're trying to swim across water. Take uh take a take a malice here. Like that kind of stuff. Mm. Where it's like, you know, not exactly like it's uh due to the fact that you took the hydrophobia trait, uh this uh drawback, this means that should you attempt to cross water, you take a uh, plus one difficulty on your checks. It'd be more of a Oh yeah, by the way, you have this drawback. Let's go ahead and adjust your dice accordingly. To like, you know, better better fit the fact that like your character struggles with this. In the situation, yeah. Yeah, in the situation. Not like codifying explicit rules for all of it. It's more of just like like reasonably Dart would probably not react well to having to swim across water. Yeah, so the the drawbacks i'm not going to give a cohesive list on them i'm going to give some examples of things but the but that's because they are meant to be role play like you could be an alcoholic you could be uh, hydrophobic you could uh, you, you could have any of the phobias really <laughs> um and so that would be, uh, it'll have a note that it's up to your storyteller to say, yeah, that's a good enough uh, drawback or not. Um, but otherwise, it's going to be open-ended for the players. And we'll give some examples, but it, it's up to, it, it's between the players and storyteller on what they decide to go with. Because, like, I personally probably wouldn't have thought of putting a hydrophobia on the list until this discussion. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I was just more talking about it having mechanical effects, not rules. Yeah. I believe that there's a difference there. So, typically when people talk about mechanics, they are referring to a, okay, you're getting a minus one. That That's at least how a lot of people I've come across interpret when we say mechanics. That's what we mean. That's why I've tried to specify that it has no mechanical influence. Because... Outside of what the story, it, it, it what the storyteller decides. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, that's all I wanted to go over, though. Uh, thank you for coming by, Seda. I'll let you get back to Abby now. Hey, no, th no th th thank you for including me in the discussion. Yeah. Um, I'll be getting to work on some of these uh, adjustments and such. While looking at this absolutely precious art that Hex is doing. By the way, I renamed the document very sadly. What? Very sadly. Oh, the the the, the document name is now Scar System. Ah. Very sad. 
Yeah, but it's okay. Um, I'm not changing anything else. I'm just changing the name of the document. We are going to be using the uh, acronym throughout the document just because it's easier for the sake of using it as opposed to oh, yeah. the full name. Um, Which is also why I put it in the title because otherwise it'd be a fucking long ass title. Yeah. On, like, you know, for Google Docs, not for. Um, but, anyways. Uh, Taldarius, um, if you could work on those, uh, tire, those, uh, oh, I see, Seda, you have given a lot of, uh, the colors, okay. Yeah, he's given a lot of colors. He gave a full you know, color I, I, palette. I, I, as, as I said, I, 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 I put some thought into this, and I, like, I had some <gasps> extra time at work, so I did stuff. I was expecting, you know, a few of the colors, not uh, or a few of them having yeah. alternate colors. Zim, you should know me by this point. Like, I'm not going to just chip an idea here and there. I'm going to give you the whole, you know, the whole freaking store. Yeah. Well. And, and I did that in isolation. I literally, like, made a copy of the document, deleted all your stuff there, and then I just started from scratch. Just so I wouldn't be influenced by previous decisions. Alright. I don't know which of these I will go with, but I do like uh, some of these suggestions. Yeah, um, it's actually kind of why I asked you about like the Sonic and stuff there, because... Um, Originally, like, I actually went with your standard color code for silver, uh, C0, 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 uh, but actually it was a little bit too light, so I actually, I jokingly actually pulled that color code from Dart, so that is a Dart Metal Gray. Um, <laughs> the official name for this uh, hex code now, Dart Metal Gray. Um, but... Um, Mythic, I actually originally went with a gold color code, but I switched over to one of the color codes for bronze. Um, still kind of keeping the Mythic. I was thinking more godly as opposed to like more dragon stuff there, but I think it still works. Actually, yeah, um, that applies ne perfectly. Necrotic and Poison, I actually switched around, but the more I looked at it, like, you know, Poison, I still kind of associate more with purple, and Necrotic can very much easily be that very toxic, um, toxic green. And there, w there was room in there for that. Um, Psyonic, yeah, I made more pinkish, um, just so it stands out from the, um, I did kind of make, um, basic, like a basic baby pink, like, it's light enough to be basic, but like also stands out differentiated enough. Um, everything else kind of is a bit more self-explanatory. Um, Sonic, I kind of like just yeah. did with a lighter wind in a sense. They're both like bluish grays, but one's on a much lighter tone, but not too dark that they start overlapping with like yeah. water or astral. I, so, uh, I, I'm still not quite happy with the beige for light, but at least it's a much brighter version of it. I, I did actually go with like a, I try to go with more of a sunlight kind of light. So a, a, a very light, warm, like yellowish orange. I'm going to go watch something. I'm going to catch y'all later. All right. Oh, that's See ya. ya. Oh, the hex is alive. I've been dead. This is the ghost. Ooh. Head pat the hex. Ooh. Pat. Pat, pat. So, you hey, know, hex. there was a... Hex. Hex. Hex is dead again. Someone hex. grab the defib. I know how to revive him. Hex, you're a good boy. Ow! It didn't, it didn't, it didn't work, Sim. Oh no, I know it worked. Considering he is currently drawing a dead dog face on Squirrel's wing. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> You've got two idea. 
<laughs> Alright, well, um, as far as these go, I don't think I like your suggestion for Necrotic. It just feels a little too neon for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of like the more duller color, mostly because it'll be easier on the eyes to read if we have something written in it. Yeah, um, I, I will actually also add a part of my philosophy with this is that particularly with, um, with, you know, typings out of similar colors, like nature and necrotic or, you know, let's just say water and wind, that they were distinct enough that you could have a dual typing side by side and you could still tell at a first glance which one is not disagreeing with you but i kind of like went extreme down that philosophy yeah no neo uh, i am not talking about you or are we are we yes. um i will also say that i kind of like prefer our original color for mythic because it pops out more Actually, I'm rather liking Seda's suggestion. Like, yeah, the mythic one that I put in there stands out a lot more. Uh, I kind of like the suggestion from Seda here for the... Like, it stands out from the rest of the colors. While still being not as bright on the eyes. Um, and, and and if I was to like you know do that weird like you know how like you know dragon typing in Pokemon like they have like that weird like purplish general hue but they also incorporate like a little bit of red. Like if I if I was like going one step further, I'd almost be like here have like a golden text there just to be like extra go godly over the top, but um, but. Also on the same vent there. Might be a bit too much on the eyes. Yeah. yeah, I just don't like the um fact that uh like uh mythic is uh like a dull color. That's my that's my thing. Yeah, I mean like I feel could... like mythic should probably be one of the ones to like pop out the most in the color palette we're using. Yeah, I mean like if I was to actually take like a shite a lighter shade of that like it'd almost be a little bit you'd almost have to make fire a little bit more red but that's me like nah, fire doesn't need to be more red if you made it that i kind of like keeping the fire where it is with that kind of brownish red color mm. mostly uh again for the eyes um, I like that new shade that you put in there, Seda. I like that a lot. For the uh, mythic. Yeah. Uh, I still wish it was brighter, but it's definitely I definitely like it a lot more than the other. Yeah, I mean, actually, I could, in theory, bump the brightest up just a touch more, like, without essentially changing the hue. Because um, right now, it's at about... about 75% saturation. Um, but, um, yeah, I could bump the hue up a little bit more to, like, or, sorry, the actual, um, bring the brightness up to that. That's, like, the max brightness for that color tone. Like, if I was to actually just to, for argument's sake, um, actually, let me just go, badoop, and then go, badoop. If I was to go maximum saturation on that that's what we'd actually get for the saturation, which is actually pretty damn close to um, your original. So I just kind of like brought the saturation down just a little bit. And the brightness, but that latest example is the brightness turned back up to max from where we were before, which was, I believe, that. It does seem a lot less, uh, at least like from what it was before, but... Uh... It was, like, almost the same hue, but it, it seemed less, uh, shitty on the eyes. Oh, yeah, no, like, there's a lot you can do just with, like, saturation and, like, brightness. 
Yeah, because I will say that I like the I like the brighter orange color, but like I definitely agree that it's a bit hard on the eyes. It's just also that I feel like mythic, like of this whole list, should probably be the one to pop. It it, it definitely should be the ones where it's just like it should have your character going my eyes. Well, not specifically your character. I mean, like you know, I I just feel like it should stand out on the. On the, on the whole thing, you know? Oh, no, I agree. All right. So, from this list here, I'm liking sticking with that deep navy bluish color there for shadow. Um, my premise on that was kind of going with like the idea of ninjas and such, going with that kind of coloring, because that was the color of the... Uh, night sky and such mm -hmm. i was about to say like that's night blue anyways so yeah that's what i was meaning is uh that deep blue yeah. um however i like that shade that kind of dark gray possibly for basic instead I will. Uh, what are thoughts Hello, on that? Well, I think it could work out. For me, when I think basic, I actually just think of a very light white color. Something that like, I admittedly didn't go with even for my one, but... Um... Yeah, it's a difficult one because... The, so I do want to say that I also kind of feel like it should be more of a white. However, I'm also considering the fact that most of the time this is probably going to be on a white background. Mm -hmm. So that's why I've been avoiding having basic as a, a whiter color. Um, but I do like that shade of gray as opposed to the one that we currently have for it. It definitely seems different than, like, because, like, the current one we have for it just kind of, like, screams, like, uh, it's very similar to our metal one. It, it'd, be, yeah. it'd be very hard to differentiate. Um, okay, so I like your suggestion for Astral. I think we'll take that. Any opposition? I definitely to like that? that color. Model. Okay. All right, so yeah. let's get that in here. Yep, and I was definitely just thinking, de 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 definitely an RZ inspiration for that one, but like Astral, I was thinking more spacey, but like, you know, obviously we don't go dark, so that deep navy blue was felt like a good compromise. Yeah, the, the main thing about the other one was that the other one was literally called Astral Blue. It was. Well. But that's okay. I I'm good with this. Yeah. All right, so... I definitely do not like the pink for basic. Yeah, admittedly, like, basic and sonic were, like, the last two that I selected. So, like, I'm not... I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not fighting that one. <laughs> Literally, it's like, yeah. ba basic baby pink, basic baby blue. Let's go. 
<laughs> um. So yeah, we'll. we'll uh... I definitely think we should grab the shadow one for basic. Did I say the suggestion there? Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm leaning towards. Mostly because it's going to be on a white background. Yeah. That is to say, you can't necessarily... You, you still can kind of stylize these to have a fill color and a border color. So you could, in theory, default to a basic black border, black text with just a white fill. So that'd be universal yeah. in any, any background. Yeah. Uh, that's absolutely something we can do. Um... If we yeah, do we end could... up bordering things, I would definitely would like to have like a yellow one. Just to kinda. Well, what is that? You're getting ahead of us. Oh. Underscore Zim. Just thought you should know that Nano Eight Bit Shadox thinks you're cute. Uh, Nano. Uh, no. Just no. Oh, what Nano's? What Nano do? It's in the chat. And good night, Don Brian. Thanks for coming by. Um, as for mm, backgrounds, Nano, yes, no, yes. Um, moving on. As for backgrounds, I am thinking of leaving that primarily up to you, Seda. Um, I do like the idea of having a specific hex color for backgrounds. Did somebody say my name? Did I? Oh, no, I, I was talking about you hex said codes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was so confused there. I'm like, wait, did I say hex does that? Um, but as the one that's more artistically inclined um, among the three of us, Seda, I, I would like you to go through and pick out good background colors for each of these that I could absolutely... You mean like border colors? Yeah. Border, right, background, yeah. etc. But let's let's say background specifically. Well, no. Yeah, because because I mean, like here, for example, like I'm gonna just type this over here. Um. Um. Ba -da -ba -doop, um Because actually, like, Astral, I kind of have, like, an idea for how I would do this anyway. Um, uh, can I actually do that? Ah, uh, yes, I can. Perfect. Uh, let's do that. And let's do... Good night, that. Nano. Thanks for coming by. And actually, I probably should make the... Uh, Borderline thicker for that. Much thicker. Yeah, let's go. Did that even work? I, I think it did work. It's just you picked a gray that's so close to the default lines that it's hard to tell. Valid. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I, it did work. Because I can tell there's a difference. A very slight one, but it's there. Yeah, uh, and like you were saying for Mythic, you kind of like want like a... Ye or sorry, for Light, you want like a yellow border or something? Uh, for Light, yellow border. All right, uh, which color... Make it so co it's Yeah. Actually, I'm just going to actually switch my gears slightly. Um, and go... Or at least, like, you know, some something on there being yellow to signify that it, it's not just, like, mm. normal beige bullshit, you know? Something to invoke the theme of it being light. Hmm. 
I'm gonna go weird. I like weird. Weird makes me happy. Okay, uh, Dart, you're weird. Yeah! No. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a no on the weird or a no on the, um... That on the green border for... <laughs> yeah, that coloration is a no, but I figured I'd, I'd let you have the happy moment first there, Sata. Uh, I figured I'd let you have the happy moment first. But proof of concept idea of like how potentially you could approach things. Where you can kind of have that secondary background border color to like complement the... Yeah, basic is just basic. Astral has that little bit of like almost a star twinkle to it. Earth, you know, is a bit grounded but you know obviously we can kind of get more brown in there for a border color as opposed to a green but you get the idea yeah one, one thing gonna... that'll be a bit hard would be putting this in the actual like document it's actually, it's all good and easy in excel but it'll be harder to do it in a document not necessarily I'm actually format, yeah it's very i know exactly how to do it you can put really because normally whenever text. i try it it Oh, really? Because normally whenever I try it, it, like, fucks up all the formatting. Because I know how oh. to insert, like, Excel uh, cells, but... Oh, let me, uh... Where did I put the typing? Oh, no. I think it was under abilities? No. Oh, God, where did I put that? Oh, there it is. Types. Okay. I mean, from, from what you're saying, I've been doing this in a very jank way the whole time, so it doesn't matter, but... Uh, let me double check, because I know I've been using the borders and such. Um. Because I, I, I'm guessing from what you're saying that I'm not supposed to be inserting Excel, uh, well, you know, Google Sheets, uh, cells. No. I'm just trying to remember where the hell it is, because every time, oh, there it is. Why is it grayed out? Why, why why are you grayed out? It it was working over here. Why is it grayed out? Or am I looking at the wrong one? What you trying to do? Uh, the same thing that I did to the other text, because technically the uh, line to the left of the headings and the lines underneath them are just borders, but... Um... I can't be questioning this. Oh, right. Paragraph style for everyone. Okay, that's where it is. Okay, it may not be right, where you put this. Uh, let me see how this works. Fuck. Okay, so it is not possible. However. I well, uh... What the hell? Huh. I thought I heard something knocking on our sliding door. And we're on the third floor, so nothing should be knocking on that door. Evermore. Like, oh, sorry, nevermore. Like, it's like, cue a disappointed dart disappearing in a crack of thunder. Oh, it's the cat. I would make the noodle dragon joke, but dart felt more appropriate. I was able to, if you go down to the uh, to-do list at the bottom, I was able to make it do that, but not like, that, that's obviously not right. Yeah, that's not what I, that's what I was looking at, and that's, uh what I was talking about, but uh, it's not actually how it'll work. That said, 
what we should what we can do is just use the highlight you know that is true but it, it that only does the background not the square around well no we don't need the border like part of the thing is is that the text and border are the same color well yeah but he i was talking about like we could do the highlight i was talking about the border because he was talking about borders well yeah we can't do borders on here that is true but it doesn't have to be border like we're talking about primarily okay. the text in the color the highlight is going to be the color of the tie like the color that we put in there kind of like uh you know you can see on the type matches how astral and earth are and then the text inside will have its own color code that we can still use on the document, but on Excel, when we're, re you know, the spreadsheets, when we're referring to something, we can change the border to it. Oh. Or later on, if we get those fancy little icons like what Pokemon has, if we ever go that route, we've got that ready to go. Either way, yeah. Um, I'll leave it up to you, Seda, to pick out the text and border colors. Uh, but let's finish figuring out which colors we're going with. I was about to say, let's probably focus on the colors themselves as opposed yeah. to formatting. Cause we, if, we can figure out formatting later. Exactly. Um... I kind of prefer the current brown. It just feels more rich. Yeah. No, I, I, I definitely overdulled my Earth one. Um, for electric, I, I still lean towards the yellow. Um, either one of these is very bright. I'm personally leaning towards sticking with the original one because it feels a little bit duller than the one that you gave, Seda. Yeah, I did go with a slightly bolder tone for that one. Also, I need to step away for just a second in the restroom. Okay. We'll put a pin in this. I like the blue for electric, but there aren't a lot of yellows. Yeah, no. that's part of what? why I'm also leaning towards yellow is the fact that we have at least three blues on here. Or four. Or at least blue adjacent. So I really want to avoid having another blue. Alright, so I have a... Um... You know what? Just using the, uh, I'm just going to use Astral here. What's the, uh, what's the border that was being used on Astral? Can you click on it for me? So, like, hover over the, the border thing to tell me what color? Uh... A A A nine A D A A A nine A D Cool Ah nine A D Yes Duke Very good Very good sir Uh and I can see the hex code for it. How Which dare you, you Super Mario three, two, way one. How dare you. Hew, 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 hew. Hex is a good boy. Um, I... Here, let me... Taldarius, what are you working on? Uh, look at the bottom. So you're still I'm on formatting. No, I mean look, look, look at the, look at the thing at the bottom, on the document. 
obviously the formatting of this is uh like not good because i didn't bother to format it correctly but like i can do that for us if we want well hold on i'm running stream raiders Okay, done with that. So I didn't bother to format it correctly, but... I know how to do this. It just doesn't format right, which is what I was saying. Okay. But we can simply do text color and highlight. We don't need a... Well, yeah, but that has the border. But we don't need the I border. just wanted to use it as an example. It has the border. Yeah. I know. just want to use it as an example. Because I could also do it like that and all of a sudden the border is visible. It looks like shit because I didn't do it right. But I'm just pointing out that, like, you know, if we do want to do it like in our type matchup document. I know how to do it. I just have to spend time formatting it. Okay. Because that was the point I was making in the first place, is that I do know how to do this. It's just fuck you with formatting. Okay. Well, let's focus on the colors here for now. Um... Yeah, I, I like... I'm still not fond of our existing electric coloring, but it's slightly softer than the one you suggested, Seda. Yeah, I definitely pushed it a little bit more bolder because, like, I wanted to, like, try to push away from the potential differentiation that we could be doing with, like, light because I did go with a more y lighter yellow tone for my light, so I um, want to push things away from that. But, yeah, it's, like, it's... the the. The difference is minuscule when you look at because they yeah. share the first three letters. Yeah, we'll just leave it as is. Um, for fire, <sighs> it's a very bright red that you've got there. I kind of like the duller one that we've got. Uh, thoughts on that, Taldarius? So just to make sure that I understand for could you just repeat it real quick? Because I'm mulling it over. I just want to make sure I got it right. I'm saying we stick with the current color that I've got for uh, fire. That kind of brownish red, because okay. the suggestion from Seda feels a little too bright. Yeah, okay. If it's about it being too bright, I don't like how brown it is. Uh, could we maybe try a burnt? I'm gonna go ahead and stick it in there. Just to um, I don't think. Uh, I'm gonna just try a um, alternative here. Um, Could we try that not like how like burnt red is supposed to look like? Google, what is wrong? Um, with this, I'm turning down the opacity, or sorry, the um saturation and the brightness. 
while, while keeping the heal. Though, personally, I would probably push it to something a little in the middle. Still keeping that tone, but not as bright. But I'm just providing alternatives. Yeah, I'm just... Uh, there's a red shade that's, like, perfect, but... I don't know what it is with Google Sheets and hating to use the correct Xcode colors at times compared to where what everyone else has them as. Is it the different color? What the... Oh. Yeah, okay. Here's... Uh, just to just a snapshot it. Here's what it's supposed to look like. That's what burnt red is supposed to look like. And I checked multiple sites to make sure. It's darker. I mean, I don't really have a side-to-side -side comparison here, but it looks close to the same. Those it, are it's... five different colors okay. at the moment. No, 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 okay, here, I'll just... Side to side. Okay, well, while you're working on that, uh, let's move to light. Uh, I rather like your suggestion for that one, Seda. Gives it more of that slightly warm, whitish color to it. I kind of like that. It's lighter than what I've got, and yeah. Any opinions? Um, I definitely like that more. What was that, uh, Taldarius? I said I definitely like it more. Okay. Alright. Well, let's, uh, make that the, uh, official color, then. So you can see it on the same green thing. It's not the same color, see? There's differences. I don't know what's going on with it. It's weird. I'm guessing that the left one there in the corner is the... That's the actual thing. And then the one on the right is what's showing at Google Box, and I don't know what's going on with it. Like, I, I don't know if it's just the screen fucking up, or... I... I mean, maybe there's a slight difference? Oh, there's a difference. There's totally a difference. Then again, I swear to God, I've been going crazy over slight color differences ever since I painted my, uh, my fucking Warhammer army. And I spent days just staring at slight color differences and losing my mind. Okay, 
Okay, that's not gonna help me. Let's try again. Okay, so GIMP registers that screenshot you send as the proper color. And it also registers the one from Google Docs as the same color. Like on the same screenshot? No. Because iDropper did it, it says different. <laughs> iDropper okay. is pulling. Okay. okay. I clicked on the Google Doc with the eyedropper. It is giving me 9F2305. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm saying on my screen, because I swear to God it's different on mine. I don't know about like, your screen. I can't say. I'm just saying you're crazy because as far as... Uh, Gimp's concerned, they are the exact same hex code. All right, you know, here, just gonna... Uh, what are you doing now, Darius? Just, just give me a second. Just give me a second. Oh no! <laughs> I'm not fucking crazy. I I dropped it on my screenshot thing, and it says it's different. What the fuck? Moving on. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. Okay. Um I kind of like this suggestion, this last one here. Yeah, basically what I did is I've kept, for fire, I kept the hue of my original suggestion. I toned down the saturation and the brightness in that first alternative, but then I kind of went halfway between the two for the second one. So they're all the same hue, just that is slightly reduced brightness and saturation. So a little grayer, a little darker. Um, though that definitely is not the right color code. I can, if you want to go with that one there, I can give you the proper color code. Yeah, please do. Uh, the proper yeah. color code is, are you ready? Oh, okay. Uh, ready. Um, E24312. Alright, so we got that straightened out. Let's clean this up. Uh, for metal... I kind of like that color of uh, gray for metal. Yeah. Is that actually... Okay. Uh... 
is, it, 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 is this where we actually have the like little like dart pop up being like, that's actually the color of my fur. <laughs> I mean, considering this sheet's not going to be part of the official documents. <laughs> yeah. For Move Mythic, it on. Uh, for Mythic, I've not been beholden to the pick, the one that I picked. Um, I'm fifty-fifty on either of these. I'm yeah, I'm, I'm not too fussed either. I just like one that's brighter because i feel like again mythic should pop that's my personal opinion on it just because of the it, 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 honestly it's mostly just because of like the the connotations of the name of it All right, well, brighter would be the first one, then. Uh, I don't think that's the right hex code, though. Could you read off the actual hex code, uh, Seda? Um, the actual hex code for that one is... FF7A0E, so it is correct. No, no, no. Um, yep. this one, the the one you suggest there. Oh, the the alternative one. Yeah. Um. That wait that that one selected there, the one that like is in the G column. The one that's currently labeled as CD seven. Oh, the CD seven. Yeah. Um. Okay, that one is actually um. So the one that's in my column. Yes. Uh, that is FFA556. Five, five, Alright. Cool. You going to bed too, Orca? Well, I hope you sleep well. Night night. Got a bit of an accent saying that. <laughs> well, I surely don't know what you might mean there, uh, Hexy boy. But I do know you are a very good boy. Never thought I'd hear that in that, <laughs> in that kind of a sound. I agree, though. Hex is a very good boy. Ew. Oh, fine, Brian. I hope. Alright, moving on to nature. I'm leaning towards the green that I put in there uh, because of two reasons. One, that is forest green. Uh, that is the uh, hex code for uh, spe specifically called forest green. And hey. two... Done. Uh, well, it's also one of ZGF's primary colors. Done. Extra done. Like, honestly, like, as I said, I did these colors in a vacuum. Like, I purposely deleted the other columns just so I would not be influenced. The fact that we basically got two very similar tones, I'm yeah. not arguing. To be fair, like, honestly, what else are you really going to get from nature? Um, tree bark. Yeah, I was going to say tree bark brown, like. That is probably the only that other one. It doesn't seem naturey to me when Earth is in the same list. I know. Um, for Necrotic, I'm still leaning towards the original one. Uh, that is apparently the color of Necrotic Flesh. Um, 
And the one that you suggested is just a little too neon and bright on the eyes for me. Yeah. I mean, as an alternative uh, for that one. What's up, Taldarius? Oh, no, I was just saying I agreed with you. Thought it was a bit bright. Ah, yeah. It does unfortunately push it a little bit towards nature, but I toned down the saturation and the brightness. Uh, Only providing the alternative because we basically have two extremes in that one. Like, Yeah. I'm still personally leaning towards the uh, current one. Very fair. I definitely think they're different enough that it's very easy to distinguish them, even if we leave it as is. Mm. You know All what right. I mean? Yeah. Uh, next up, we have Poison. Um, well, kind of Poison and Psychic. They... Their colors are similar enough here. Yeah, um, yeah it'd kind of be a, a, a pair. I'm... I'm kind of leaning towards... I kind of towards... like the more purple bird. But... Which one? I said I kind of like the more purple burgundy of poison. Which column? Of the of the second one. Because burgundy is a red one. Like the more purple red. So you're saying the one under Seda? Yeah. I kind of like that color more for it. Yeah, I'm, I, I, it I, I can... It fits the motif better. I can go it, for it. it it, I, I, I think like the purple you chose is definitely a royal purple, where the purple I chose is one that would I would associate with something that would want to make me puke. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing that I was thinking about is that because we changed astral, it's a lot closer to our purple. Than, True. Uh, it's a lot closer to the 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 new. So yeah, I also wanted to change this. Yeah, that is a very good point. Also, I have a joke that I want to make, but I'm going to save it to the end because my brain's seeing these colors and my brain's like, it's making some happy noises, but for a very random reason. I want to hear it. I'm, no, I'm going to wait to the end. Is it going to get make, these colors first? Is it going to make me want to completely revamp everything? Hopefully not. <laughs> <sighs> Alright, first psionic. I'm very partial to keeping it as it is. Yeah, no, I think especially with the changes that have been made. Yeah. Like, because yeah. I, I went more bold with that pink for psionic because I made, like, the basic in my version that kind of baby pink. So I kind of pushed yeah. away from, like, that Umbreon pink to, you know, something bolder. Uh, uh, but yeah also I kind of don't want to use that pink just because it makes me think uh, hey we have psychic type at home <laughs> yeah we have psychic type at home alright so we'll stick with the original on that uh, Sonic we've got three suggestions here if we go with Seda's suggestion for Sonic, we're definitely going to need to change Wind. Yeah. I was thinking the last three as a kind of a set anyways, mostly. Yeah. Yeah, like they're, they're all blue like tones, but it's like making the... Going more white with one of them, more gray with the other. And Actually, basically my philosophy was that... To be fair... Go ahead. Yeah. 
Uh, I was gonna say that, uh, I do think it's kind of funny that, like, you know, uh, the saturation difference between the, the Sonic and Win, but, like, we, you kind of almost just flipped our stack here. Basically. Like, I kind of, like, took Sonic as more pure sound, so I went with the whiter one, where with Wind, I kind of ultimately added a bit more grays to that tone, almost like a slate, light slate blue to kind of have, like, that stormy wind vibe. Just help us with. We probably shouldn't have this one. I mean, I was. Was, I was kind of considering yours as long with it, but okay. No, no, I don't. Okay. <laughs> I, I was more just putting it there, like, as a placeholder, and I was planning on fucking with the saturation, and then I never did, so that it, don't. That, that was going to have a, a saturation difference. I definitely want to stick with the original water. I can say that for sure. Uh, yours is just a little too strong, I think. And yeah, that's fair. I went with like a, a bit of a deeper blue. And like, yeah. it's totally fair. So then it's a matter of what we do with... Sonic and Wind... I am personally leaning towards keeping wind as that really light blue. Um, kind of like... I mean, I know clouds are not part of the wind and stuff, but it, it kind of all ties together in my... Kind of what it comes to mind for me. And then for Sonic, I yeah. specifically went with a teal color, just so it's not true blue. And All right, I kind I'm of heading like out. Oh, no. You are not released from your contract yet. No, I have to go to the gym. I have to go. You've been working out your muscles all day. My back hurts <laughs> sitting at the oh, desk. Oh, okay, it's fine. Scary. Go ahead. Your health is more important. Make sure you yeah. send those to me on Discord. Although I like how we... I Both sheets. No, this one is... <laughs> yes, I want that one too. Have a good night. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Good night. Thank you for coming by. Good night. Have fun choosing colors. By the way, I like how there was like one roll and it never really even. There was one. Oh, much. one spin. Of yeah. The, of the wheel. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Meanwhile, Rygon with my chances are pretty good. <laughs> I, I, I told him not to say that. Okay, so I see that Seda, but why is this box green? What did, what did you do, Seda? Okay. Um, Wait, what, what one did thing I do? that I... What, one thing that I did want to bring up and consider real quick is that um, one of the other colors that wind is commonly associated with is a real, is like a green. So I actually kind of like chat's suggestion for it. Kind of like that almost that. like um, aqua color? No, 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 no. Chat for wind. Yeah, no, I'm looking at that. That's like a very like light aqua color. Aqua? Yeah. Why are you saying aqua? Aqua is a lot more green than people think. It's a light green. It, it's a very light green. It's not aqua. I kind of see more, uh, at least on my monitor, I see more aqua tones than that, but it's like, I can I can almost see like that almost like very light seafoam green too. I mean, you, you would have a case if you said like a seafoam, yeah, like aquamarine, but not aqua. But uh, the more important distinction is the um, uh, 
color itself as opposed to the name of the color. Yeah. Uh, and the reason, and like I said before, I am, I kind of like it just for the pure fact of uh, it's commonly associated with um, with wind, like light green colors. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm indifferent. I have no preference. Uh Well Hmm None of us have any preference on this and it's like Okay, you uh, know what? If there is preferences, just go with both of the light versions because, like, they, they, they're both kind of, like, lighter in terms of, like, the idea behind them, so. I just say to take all three of those and mix them together, and that'll be our color. <laughs> We're just going to be merging the Sonic Water and Wind type and um, just making a Storm type. <laughs> Actually, no, we're called Tempest type. There we go. Water and wind in one go. That sounds really cool, but no. <laughs> I mean, look, I haven't even got into the, um... The silliness yet. Ah, yes. No, no, if no, if no one else tsunami. cares, like, I'm, I'm in favor of... If no one else cares, I'm in favor of just making it so that way it's the lighter colors. So, Seda's suggestion for Sonic and chat suggestion for Wind. Besides, looking at the rest of the list, um, they they'd all be very distinct. Yeah. Like, so can I? Um, so are we all settled then? Uh, Seda suggestion for Sonic and chats for Wind. Yep, that's what I'm thinking. I'm game with that. That, that that's distinct enough. Yeah, we can go with that. All right, I'm 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 gonna post what my brain started thinking of in the streaming room chat. Oh no. I'm a bit of a nerd, so my brain just made this connection. Check the streaming room chat. Actually, can I just bring this up on stream? Go ahead. Uh, I just took a screen grab from TFL. All right, I'm looking go. at a. I'm, I'm just gonna watch stream then. <laughs> I, <laughs> it's just like, you know what? We've done our colors so lovely that we're almost matching the distinct differences that TFL uses for the London Underground in terms of their line colors. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm gonna be right back but i think we're settled on those next up how they tie how all these types match up to against each other
Oh god, I'm gonna have to save that discussion for another time. Um, well, uh, let me get back, let me, I, I need to go use the restroom. I'll be right back, then I'll send you off. Oh, please, please switch tabs from the London Underground. This is just weird. Yeah. Or I'm going to have to live with my mistake, aren't I? He's going to make me live with my mistake. Don't worry, you love weird. Don't you, say that? You love weird. What are you complaining I do, about? I do love weird, but this is like a social weird, and I don't like social weird. But, like, even just the different hit tones of blue and green that we included just feels very on point. And I swear, when I made my colors, this was not on my mind. But seeing the colors kind of, like, fall into their place, being like, wait a moment... Alright, I'm back. Welcome back. And I was going to switch back. it back, and then you made the comment about me leaving you to live with your mistake, and I had to leave it. Your respect. <laughs> All right, so, um, ideally tonight, okay, Seda, would you do me a huge favor and click on G13, please? G13, um, okay. All right, now, uh, click off. Why is that still there? On my screen, there is a green border on G13, and I don't know oh, yeah. why. Hmm. I don't see it either, by the way. I do not see the green border on G13. I do not see the green border either on green or G13, and um, it shouldn't be counting Chad, my laptop. Chad, you can see it, right? Please? Quick, chat. tell him no. Tell him he's crazy. Ha! Ah, switching sheets made it go away. Okay, we're good. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, the uh, second... out, of, out, of, out of curiosity, have you had this page open all day? Uh, yes. Was it showing me being selected there? No, it was not. But it is the okay, same color it... as you. It may, it may have been me because I was on my laptop at work working on this and I cop and I ma made the copy before I um and actually I pasted my stuff in and then probably left the tab open so it may have been me okay. just a different version of me ah uh. <laughs> so anyways uh, I made two new columns here uh, for the hex and text color for the for you to work on, say, to, uh, and that the text color includes the border. Okie dokie. So basically, you're assuming like border and text color being one and the same for simplicity's sake? Yes. Cool. Uh, we'll, we'll use the same color for text and the border for 
when we do fancier stuff on the colors. Okie dokie. Um, but yeah, uh, that is all I needed from you. Um, you are free to go and uh, say hello to Avi or whatever it is you're going to do. I'm going to virtually snuggle him and call him cute and make him break again. Great. Right. Is he still streaming? He is. Excellent. I'm going to... Uh, also, you should... I'm going to go over there and mention that uh, now that I have my PC back, we're going. I'm going to kidnap him at some point for a hangout. Because he talked about wanting to play games with me, and I'm like, I will once I have my PC back, and now that I have my PC back... There was He's no on the hook for a hangout. Coolio. So yeah, you beans take care. Have a wonderful night. I'm going to go boop the Abbey now. Have fun. Thank you. All right. So, right. I guess I can switch the category over away from art now. Uh, then again, I mean, picking colors is kind of artistic, so it was still fitting, but now it's not, because we're not doing that anymore. Now what we're going to do, I'm going to go put the boost system in. We're going to put that under the basics. Alright. Just give me a second while I message Abby. Okay, was just messaging me, right, letting them know the new name and to switch things over and whatnot. All right, I was uh, I was chatting with Avi's chat, uh, letting uh, because some of them didn't know about the rebranding. So, Abby, Abby is slowly breaking down because he's getting called cute. Okay, I'm listening in. <laughs> thank you so much for the 69 minutes, man. You did a tough two, but hey, thank you so much. Yeah. 
Can we get? No, wait, no, 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 no wait. Abby, no. Hey, Abby, hey, Abby. everybody! I need you all to go over to Avi's okay, channel and me. just type in Avi Cute. I mean, I mean, I, mean, I need you all to go do it. You were, you were here, so no, where does it really need to? Was there? Yes, but I guess it's just reinforming just how correct Abby Cute is. Oh, heck. No, wait. Huh? <laughs> but also, Trill too. Thank you so much for that, Pat. How you doing, good thing? Oh. Yes, we are almost finishing up with the solar, with the International Space Station. And then we can have unlimited power. Unlimited power. <laughs> or, or, or do we do? Okay, that's enough listening in. All right, All so right, I'm yeah. calling it the Soul Boost System, just to more firmly associate it with, you know, Soul. Actually, I think this. Well, no, that that uh, I'll I'll leave it underneath rounding rules, because the rounding rules are right underneath all the dice pull and dot system and dice rolling and such. So we'll leave it. Uh, we'll keep it underneath that. Okay, you're under arrest on suspicion of armed robbery and murder. Okay, I put in the soul boost system grants you a number of dice equal to your soul attribute divided by two. These dice are able to be used to either add an extra die to a roll or used to re-roll a one. You can use as many of them as you have on any roll, but keep in mind how many you've used already. These extra dice are granted per session. They are a use it or lose it sort of setup, so use them during the session because they do not carry over. Uh, instead of just saying use to reroll a one, we should probably put in reroll a result of. Reroll a result of. Because otherwise, it. Because otherwise, there's it. Some people may assume that's just weird, dumb grammar, and they can reroll one dice instead of, a result of one. Better to just be clear. Fair point.
But then again, to be fair, if you're wanting to use it to re-roll like a two through, you know, six, you might, it might, you might as well just add an extra one. Yeah. Oh, right. But, you know, it's, it's about the principle of it. Uh, I was going to say... You can choose to add them after seeing the results of the roll. Uh, you can use as many of them as you have on any... Okay, so the way you wrote it right there, that means that it makes it sound like you can only choose one uh, time to use it a session. You have to use all of them. Oh, okay. How would you reword this? Yeah, then? so you could you can use as many of them as you want on a roll. So you can use as many of them as you want on a roll, but keep in mind how many you've used already. This makes it sound like, you know, you can use as many of them as you have left, but, you know, you only have as many as you have left, and you can use them separately. Alright, everything else look good on it? Uh, let me just reread it one last time. As many of them as you want on a road to used already this extra dice in the first session, they either use it or lose it. So set up so use them during the session because they do not can't read. Uh sounds good. Alright. Highlight this green. I also need to finish this dice pull and stats uh, section, but I've been a little bit on the Writer's block on this one. If you could help me finish this up, uh, Todd Arius. Uh, what'd you say? I was, uh, I had to plug in my headset. Sorry. Um, I came in like part way through that. The dice pull in stats section, uh, slightly above it. I haven't yeah. finished this one because I've been dealing with a bit of writer's block on how to actually word all this and put it in there. I'm trying to explain dice pulls and how they interact with stats. Uh, it is constructed from stats going into. Um, hmm. So we do call them stats elsewhere. It's partially cross. It's actually mostly crossed, but we have referred to them as stats before. So, so long as we have it defined properly, it shouldn't be a problem calling them stats. Yeah, um, the stats are... So I, that's one thing. Yeah, I, I've been very particular about all its stats being referring to attributes, expertises, and uh, skills. Yeah. yeah, we had it in more spots and it was uh, crossed through, but yeah. Yeah, I'm being specific about making sure that stats are only referring to those three. Yep. All right. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, let me go back to this, because I scrolled around, and now I've kind of lost where I was. Okay. All right, yeah, there we are. Uh, almost every roll assessment is made using three stats. The dice pool is the amount of dice you roll when determining anything. It's constructed from the stats going into the roll. Um, why are we saying the same thing twice? Because uh, in the first thing we say that the rolls are used made. Uh, you are made using three stats, and then we also later say it's constructed from the stats going into the roll. Why is it? Why are we mentioning it twice? Is there a reason? 
Um. It seems. Not really. Uh, as far as this section okay. goes, I don't care how it's written. I'm just trying to explain the concept of construction, you know, dice pool construction, and how you actually determine right. what goes into it. That's why I've been facing that writer's block is I feel like I've been rambling a bit on it and there's stuff that probably should be removed or rewritten. So Yeah. Hi, Mr. I'm just Vedantic. trying to like it, <laughs> Well, yeah, I this is why you are asking for my help. This, yeah. this is specifically why. So I do know that right after uh you mentioned this term's important reference through the manuscript, often in regards to post construction. Uh, however, instead, we would be better served by stating what construction is as opposed to rehashing this pretty much the same thing from the first line. Feel free to rewrite it. All right, I will in a second. I want to get through the whole thing before I touch it. Uh, what this means is, say, a rule list you support. A rule lists that you subtract dice from your roll post-construction. Do we have that anymore? Uh, I want to we include... Even have... it. Right now, no. We do not have anything referencing construction and post-construction stuff. However, I want to include it because there's a very strong possibility that we could have something that affects that. All right. In that case, it's fine to have it in here, because I like I just realized, oh yeah, I think we got rid of everything currently that does post-construction. Uh, what this means is, say, a rule list you subtract dice from your rule post-construction. Uh, in this case, you would calculate out all of the dice for your rule. Okay, yeah, that is... No offense, but that is, like, the most confusing way to possibly say that. I'm aware. I don't know why you are telling me what right. I have already said. Uh, in regards to the dice pool itself, when you are constructing a pool, you add up the dots in every stat that is... I'm just going to assume that that meant, like, going into it or whatever. Yeah. Um... All right, I'm going to do what I always do when I want to edit something, but I want to have what's there originally. I'm grabbing out the notepad so I can see it all written up. Uh, do we want to put how to actually construct the your dice pool here, or do we want it to be elsewhere? I want it here. That was I the point. Like it... That was the main okay. point of this particular section: is explaining how to construct your dice pool. It explains the dice pool, so when we do reference to it uh, elsewhere in the document, they have this is how this is what the dice pool is. This is how you construct it. And it also gives in any, you know, how to handle p dice pool construct, you know, post construction adjustments. Yeah. Uh, attributes. Please.
Hello, Rob. And hello there, Crosspath. Uh, we are working on an actual uh, tabletop system. Uh, not uh, necessarily a story with this particular thing here. Um, it's a foundation for making stories. With your friends. Uh, but the main purpose of this system is allowing you to play... We're just going to summarize them as magical animals. Uh, you know... Well, not necessarily even just animals, but Pokemon, Digimon, uh, Monster Hunter Monsters, uh, Fake Mon, whatever you come up with, whatever you want to put in here. We're building the foundation for you to be able to play any of those. Oh, I'm okay, uh, Archenil Rob. Just kind of working on this a bit, getting things updated with the new name and whatnot, which is what I'm going to be working on now while you're working on that, uh, Taldarius. Yeah, okay. Sure, dice. This would be a lot easier if I just control C. just decided to rob uh cross path like i said it's pokemon digimon monster hunter monsters and whatever else that you decide to use the system for not just digimon
It's more about giving the foundations... Uh, yeah, it's a system for playing within those universes. Yeah, kind of like what Kenku right, said. So I have a... What's up? Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and uh, just, you know, uh, put in an example. Uh, what character gets the example today? Uh, use Vayne. All right. Okay, we don't have any references to Rao on this document. Aside from the logo. Which the logo... I'd say the logo is probably still there. Yeah. But that'll be taken care of eventually. Eventually. Mirai is making that a priority tomorrow. Hold the line. This hamlet shall not fall. Headset 479 raided my stream with five viewers. Headset! Thank you very much for that raid! How is your stream? Also... Put that there so I can make sure Taldarius has access to actually editing this document. There we go. By the way, uh, so I know that we wanted there to be uh, the capability for the storyteller to add dice to your pool when you do something cool. Or yes. unique, or if they feel the like The creative it. solution uh, system. Yes. Do we also want there to be, like, the possibility of them removing dice due to environmental penalties? Ah, uh, yeah, they can absolutely do that. All right, I'm using that as the example, and I so I wanted to ask it because that was the idea that popped in for the example, and I wanted to check with you on that. Yeah, Absolutely. Um, cross path. So first off, headset. Uh, stream was good. Just figuring out some programs, making maps so you can do D and D sometime soonish. Well, very nice. I hope you have a good time with it and it goes well. Uh, cross path. Um, I have been working on this system for about a year now. Um, actually, yeah, I, I think it's been a almost exactly a year. I don't remember when exactly I started working on it, but I know I started working on it uh, last October. Um, and uh, so it's kind of taking a bit of my knowledge from like I have been streaming for seven years, over seven years. Actually, we're coming up on seven and a half years now. Uh, but I have been streaming for a long time, and I started streaming with tabletop games. Those were the first things that I streamed. And uh, 
so I have been using my collective knowledge of doing tabletop professionally, as well as before that when I was, you know, just a kid doing it since... God, I've been doing it for... Oh god, 23 years now. God, that makes me feel old. Because I remember my dad introduced it to me in 2000. He introduced me to D&D. Um, but, uh, yeah. I I've been doing tabletop for a long time. I have done many different systems. I've played D20 Modern. I've done D&D 3.5, 3rd and 2nd, as well as 5th edition. Nobody talks about 4th. Uh, it does not exist. Um, I have done Pathfinder 1st Edition, World of Darkness in multiple different editions. I've done, uh, Exalted. I've done Starfinder. Uh, Poke Roll. My biggest issue with 4th is... They over-monetized it. They got greedy as hell with it. Um, that, that was the biggest problem with 4th. That I had. I kind of... St I, I started looking at it, and then I put it down as soon as I realized that it's like, okay, to actually have all of the same classes as 3rd edition has... Uh, with just one player's handbook, I'm going to need to have how many different player's handbooks with this? Because I remember looking at it, it's like each, uh, they had like five different player's handbooks in 4th edition. And each one gave you like three or four races and three or four classes to pick from. Kenku, it's possible they've changed it since, but that was definitely how it was in the, uh, uh, when I was looking at the books. I don't know how far into 4th edition that was, but, uh, yeah. So, Crosspath, uh, my plan with this system, which we have just renamed to Scar today, uh, Stories and Critters in uh, Alternate Realities, um, my intention with this system is eventually we are going to have a proper book. The book will... And I'm kind of going to go along the lines of Pathfinder with it. Where all of the stats and stuff are going to be publicly available. It's just going to be there. Uh, however, we will have like printed copies or PDFs of more finalized versions uh, that you guys can purchase to support the development. Like, it's definitely not the wisest idea financially to uh, be giving it all for free, but I still, I like that philosophy. I would rather people be playing it than just trying to make money off of it. Money making is secondary. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my plan. Uh, eventually I'm going to be going to Kickstarter with it. Mostly to help with the various costs that come with actually publishing a book. Which I stumbled upon and realized the nightmare that is. 
and the costs involved with that. <laughs> Not to mention give some compensation to, you know, my for my time as well as those that have been helping me, like Taldarius here, who is currently on the screen as Vane, and uh, Seda, who's also been I helping just... out and stuff. At me this a bit now, at least I know what it looks like. All right, uh, I think that this fits nicely and it explains everything and it gives an example. Although it did tab over a bit. We had it right. What's up? Uh, I accidentally tabbed over a little bit too far. I fixed it, that's fine. Uh, if you check dice pool and stats under the basics, uh, I think it explains everything. It gives an example, and it fits the page in general. Okay. Almost every role in this system is made using three stats, attributes, expertise, and skill. The dice pool is the amount of dice you roll and is usually determined by adding together the attribute, expertise, and skill that the storyteller asks for. Once you have added together the stats making up your dice pool, it is now considered to be constructed. The constructed term is important and referenced a few times throughout this document, often in reference to rules saying to do something post-construction. An example of this is if a rule lists that you subtract dice from your roll post-construction. You would construct your dice pool as normal, then remove dice afterwards. Example. Vane is attempting to evade debris kicked up in his flight path by a severe storm he is trying to fly out of. The storyteller calls for a check made up of body plus expertise plus evasion. The reason that expertise was not specified is because that's up to Vane. He chooses instinct for this check. Vane has two body, one instinct, and two evasion, resulting in a dice pull of five. However, due to the extreme winds hampering his movement, the storyteller imposes a post-construction minus three dice pull penalty on Vane's check. Vane now has two dice to evade those branches. Yikes. I like it. I also gave a, uh, it's a little bit more verbose, but it's literally in chapter one. So I figured that now is the time for verbose examples. Yeah. That, that is good. That is very good. I am satisfied with that section. I give it the green highlight of approval. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for handling that. Yep, no problem. I was trying to explain it, and yeah, you saw what I was doing. It was bad. <laughs> Also, now I need to add Vane up here to the characters appearing in this book. Okay. What? I asked you which one to use. Yeah. So? I mean, this isn't a bad thing that I have to add you here. It's just I I'm adding you. There. Vane, the mob bird played by Taldarius in Lost in Chaos. Because I don't want to use the actual species, you know. 
Yeah. I thought about it and then I chose not to. I thought about it then decided better. I'm like, hmm, maybe not in the main. Um, the next thing I would like tonight, if you could, is update the character sheet with some of the new changes. Yeah, I was planning on doing. Yeah. Um, you know, the new expertises and such, and the removal of the merits. Yeah, there's a lot that needs to be updated. Yeah. And we can move on to version 1.2. That was the plan. All right, so we don't need to update that story, though we do need to update the second section here, because we're no longer using other worlds. We're now using alternate realities. Yep. I'm just going to read through it because that'll be the easiest and best for entertainment. Hello there. Welcome to the world of Pokemon. My name is... O uh, hang on. Wrong script. Let's see. Ah, here we go. Ahem. Digimon. Digital... Mon Ooh, wait. Uh, well, that's the wrong one, too. Hmm. You know what? I'll just swing it. Wait, is this thing still recording? Oh dear. Well, I'm sure they'll fix it in editing. Uh, they do have editors, right? Uh, anyways, for the editors out there, I'm starting now. Hello, and welcome to... Alternate Realities. Some might call this the multiverse. There are some obsessed with going to the moon that I've been told would call it a metaverse. Though I really don't think that applies. But anyways, I am Greaves, gnomish merchant extraordinaire. Owner of Greaves Adventuring Co., Greaves Artifacts and Sundrise Emporium, Greaves Wagon of Wonders, and many more. I'm sure you've heard of me. You found this, hmm, I'll just record a few different versions and you can insert the proper term for the world they found this on here. Tome, book, tome, manuscript, clay tablet, and you're wondering what exactly you've stumbled into, right? Well, so am I. You may have been born the way you are now, or perhaps you were, as some mortals say, isekai'd by truck into this new body. Either way, you are here now in one of the many, many alternate realities. These worlds are inhabited by a truly endless amount of varieties of creatures. Some may have yellow mouses capable of wielding lightning bolts. Others have quadrupedal robotic wolves with enough guns built into its body to conquer 90% of Earth in a matter of days. Disclaimer, Greaves Alternate Realities Exploration League is not responsible for misplacement of new forms in inappropriately power-balanced worlds. Please blame truck -coon. Yes, indeed. Blame truck, truck coon, not Greaves. Yes. Greaves is yes. just an innocent merchant. Exactly. That's all he is. <laughs> On behalf of all of me, myself, and I at Greaves Truck Coon and No Clip Simulations, we welcome you to your new home here in the alternate realities. Good luck and make a grand story. Right. Now that the stuff for them is out of the way, hello, players! Yes, I'm talking to you. No, the other you. Wait, you're not supposed to see past the previous paragraph. Right. That's been fixed now. An actual hello to you players out there looking to play as your favorite little holy potatoes and monkeys with fire butts. This is the SCAR system. A system designed for playing all of those other various critters out there from the very from the many different very popular and not so popular and completely for custom franchises across the many completely unrelated worlds out there. This system is designed to allow you to play Pokemon, Digimon, the monsters from Monster Hunter, and any other special critter you may want to play, while keeping things as balanced and standardized as possible. 
with such a variety of chaotic entities that definitely would not normally mesh together at all. Whether your storyteller chooses to have these alternate realities connected together or not is up to them. Though this system should be capable of allowing such interconnected, unrelated worlds to coexist with some resemblance of balance. Disclaimer, we are not responsible for unplanned interactions between franchises and overpowered entities therein. Caution is advised. However your group of friends decides to play is up to your imaginations. Do you dive into shifting dungeons to rescue others? Do you run a merchant empire, connecting the world together by trade? Do you raise an army to fight an evil tyrant? All of these things are your choice, your imagination, and of course, your story. Alright, I think we're good. Now to start replacing Rao. Oh, I, I'm impressed. There's only 31 references to it. One of which is the Rao character sheet. But that'll be fixed soon. I was definitely expecting more. Yeah. To be fair, like, it's not exactly the best idea to, like, constantly name drop your own system in the system document itself. True. Like, there's not really a reason to do that. Like, yes, they know what they're reading. Hopefully. I mean, have you seen some of these people out there, you know? Like that, uh, mm -hmm. that Kenku guy? Like, you know, you gotta remind him. I mean, I know, right? I know. He's just a head of lettuce, after all. Goes well in a bowl with ranch, though. That he does. <laughs> Here, let me tap it just to see his reaction. <laughs> he says, dot, 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 dot. One, I'm not shale. Two, no. No, you wouldn't go good with ranch, but I love ranch. Everything goes well with ranch. Why would that be your concern? Put the ranch on your ice cream. You know, it's fine. Actually, I think there is ranch ice cream out there. Wouldn't surprise me. I am from the Midwest, which, you know, obviously, you know, not the only way here, but... If there's one thing that is unanimously beloved, it seems, it's ranch. The best part about having to edit the uh, the character sheet is attempting to brain blast mind visualize like what my proposed idea changes would look like. What do you mean? 
Uh, because it's not, uh, I've, I've learned in the past that it's, like, really not that good of an idea to, like, just start editing things. Because it kind of just ends up turning into a mess really quickly. So instead what I do is I look at it and I try to, like, imagine what it would look like if I did, like, the proposed changes. Uh... But it means that I just sit here and stare at the same document without changing anything for a while before actually deciding what to do. It's faster. It's just, you know... It, obviously, the best part is sitting here doing nothing, but actually doing something. <laughs> Scarpies. I forgot about that suggestion for currency. <gasps> That that was uh that was a thing. Uh could you update the name of the character sheet to at least be Scar now? Yeah, I'll I'll just do that. Boom. It is edited. Obviously I would change the logo, but we don't have the new logo. Yeah, that is that will come hopefully soon. Yeah. All right, I think that this is where we're going to go ahead and call it for the stream here, everybody. I very much appreciate all of you hanging out with me, though, uh, while we've gone through all of this today. You guys are fantastic. Looks like Abby raided out. I was going to go raid him, but uh, that's okay. Oh, okay. So, thank you all so much for joining us today for this Art Martin's Creative Tales stream, as well as a Dev Martin's, uh, actually I think it's Stream Martin's Dev Tales, that's right. But anyways, thank you all so much for joining. Check out our website, zgfgaming.com. We've got links for our Discord, Telegram, Mastodon, Patreon, and more. They're on the website as well as down in the description below through our link tree. Thank you to my patrons, tippers, and subscribers. You all keep this channel alive. I can't do this without your support, whether it is financially or just with your time. Consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash zgfgaming. It's one of the best ways to support the channel. However, you can also do so by sharing the stream around, as well as coming by and hanging out. And you can also uh, support by picking up some packs of cards or stream loots. And just by generally coming by and hanging out and all that good stuff. I'm pretty sure I said that already, but oh well. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube. But for now, I bid you all the most fondest adieu. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.